Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcat production, with your hosts, Melanie Hope and James Monis. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. <laughs> As you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're watching our live show, hit like and join the chat. If you're listening dead, well, you can still hit like, share, subscribe, and comment, but please stop voting Democrat. And a fine howdy duty on this beautiful, blustery, and yet still very warm day here in Central Texas. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Counterculture Wise Edekam, where today we'll share all kinds of fun news and commentary and crickets and, and cats stuff. and dogs and stuff and things. And caterpillars. And oh my gosh, with the caterpillars still. <laughs> <laughs> and the snails. But we also have inchworms adding to our, our repertoire, yes. so that, that's been a lot of fun, a lot of childhood relive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am your hostess with the mostest, Ms. Melanie Hope, and here in studio with me besides the dog, Miss um, Sadie, and the cat, Max. Mr. Maximilian, who is purring his ever-loving head off. He's a happy boy. Is my co-host, my best friend, happens to be my spouse, and... My sweet baboo, Mr. James Monis. <sighs> <Bah. laughs> no dad jokes? Okay. <laughs> Speaking of dads, my dad wanted me to become a fruit farmer like him, but I always told him I was scared to do it. So he told me to grow a pear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good that sounds one. like something your dad would say. <laughs> yeah, it actually is something he would say. Um, if you're listening, dad. Love ya. <laughs> Bye. Love ya. Yeah. Well, it has been quite a week. 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 I'm sure Chuck will have something to say about that later. He certainly will. Yeah. Um. I'm kind of just. I guess we're just in shock here at the beautiful Counterculture Wise Studios because our um, the people on the other side of the political fence. A few of them are stepping up and actually. Doing the, between Fetterman, like waking up and realizing that. Yeah, it's it's funny that stuff. once he recovered from brain damage, now they're calling him a right winger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, okay. <laughs> oh man, 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 I think that says more about you guys than it does about him. But you know, yeah. whatevs. <laughs> well, I mean, this first person we're going to be talking about in a few minutes uh, has set off alarm bells within the Democratic Party. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's well, she ain't she ain't gonna be president. That's no, for sure. No, no, she re- she recognizes that. She uh, her goal is to actually just get on the on the ballot in like ten states. Yeah, that, that is her goal. Hmm. Um, At the very least, if she gets the word out, she'll make a yeah, big difference. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. I mean, it's like the the point of third. Everybody's party like, platforms. what are we talking about? Well, what? before we check into that, um, yeah. hey, how's it going? I'm 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 I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. 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 Any any news you want to share with the the CCW listeners? I um I can't think of anything. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Nothing off the top of your head. Well, you no. get new glasses. That's exciting. Oh, yes, I got I got I got new Truman Capote glasses. They're coming they're in. They're coming. Yeah, long. I got new glasses and they're really yeah. cute. They are adorbs, <laughs> absolutely adorbs. But you know, one thing about not having a regular day job, I'm not using the unemployed word, but <laughs> not having, not having a regular day job is uh, that. We get to spend more time together, and it's actually been very pleasant. Has it? Yes. Okay. It's been pleasant. You don't act like it's been pleasant. <laughs> That's because I'm just a natural-born grump. That I, is true. You know, it, 
doesn't. You, you uh, and Oscar the Grouch are, are very yeah, much those, you know, I identified mostly with Grover when I was a kid, yeah. but let's face it. No, I'm totally Grover. Yeah. With you and me, it's da 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 I always used to think Oscar Madison was funny, and then I became Oscar, and yeah. then it wasn't so funny anymore. And I'm like, if you could just not put your dirty socks on the stove, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I did hardcore wifing all day yesterday. Oh, my God. You have no idea. She baked bread. She... Did all this traditional? I, I made stuff. dog cookies. Made dog cookies. I, I dehydrated chicken paws mm-hmm. for the dog. She's a little bit spoiled, but yeah. dog cookies so good that Jim wanted to taste them when they came out of the oven. Yeah, you know, a little bit of sugar or some sweet yeah, would I mean, have helped, but it's very w- bland to me. But to the taste buds of a woggy. If I oh if I were gosh. if I were making them for humans, I'd add like applesauce and cinnamon. Yeah, yeah so, they're basically pumpkin, even. peanut butter, and oats, and um, bake them till they're nice and crunchy like milk bones, and, and that's boy, it. I mean, no, she digs those. Oh, she the other loves thing, the other them. thing we 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 do, and it's so inexpensive. It's it's, it's crazy, yeah. crazy, stupid cheap. We we get chicken paws or what we would chicken normally feet, call yeah. chicken feet. But yeah. the meat people call it the chicken paws. <laughs> and you just go to a meat market. They're ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Buy a couple and pounds for, you know, not too much and yeah. um, clip off the toenails and stick mm-hmm. them on the dehydrator until they're completely... And this dog adores them. Loves them. They're you know. gross and scary and nasty looking. But yeah, they're, they're typically when I, when I need broth, which I don't, I have a whole freezer full of food right now, mm-hmm. um, they make really good bone broth. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get so some for bone broth and then extras for her. Yeah, so and, yeah, and it really, I mean, you save so much money by doing it that mm-hmm. way, and it's so effective because chicken paws are mostly bone anyway. Yeah, you know? and the great thing is she can be, you know, literally five acres away, and if I yell cookie, here she comes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it works really well. And we know. So she got to go to the vet on Thursday and got mm-hmm. a clean bill of health, and nice. it's all healthy and got all her shots and is up to date on everything and mm-hmm. uh, got her flea and her tick and her... Um, heartworm and all the stuff. All so. the funs. All yep, the funs. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, my, I, the school that I will eventually be signing up for to go after a bachelor's degree in divinity, they have um, Ooh, ordination. Divinity, yum. <laughs> they have ordination uh, classes, and they came up with a brand new one just oh. as I was about to go on a di- in a different direction. But I'm finally taking lessons on how to do a funeral. Now, I've done weddings, lots of weddings, tons of weddings. I've mm-hmm. never done a funeral before, and I have a sneaking suspicion I may be called on to be doing one soon. Sadly, I've, w- done, without... I've done at least four or five funerals. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean yeah. as, as a minister. Well, not, I know. You could do yeah. it as a... Yeah. yeah. But I, I've never actually done it before. So through Christian, Christian Leaders um, Institute... Mm-hmm. They uh, offer those things. So, um, I mean, I've been doing weddings, but it, this, all of this is great. The wedding part was a great refresher, and I learned a few things. But this funeral, it's so much involved. It's much more involved than doing a, a, a wedding. Yeah. Uh, you need to be a spiritual guide for everybody there, regardless of their beliefs. Of their beliefs, yeah. you want to respect them. If you're a Christian, as I am, you do want to weave Christianity into it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to grab a Bible, point at people, and start screaming. Yeah. You know, that, that's not going to go. He anywhere. went straight to hell. <laughs> no, no we, we don't want nobody going to hell. He was a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're Catholic, he's in purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Christ yeah. is king. There, Christ I had to say it for the week. Yeah, okay. Say for the week. <laughs> and... and yeah, that's that's one of the things. That's um, one of the things. And the fourth in the fire ministry, we're going to be after this. We're going to be recording the final bit for the first episode. I've decided that I'm going to make this an interview show. Okay. Primarily, a little bit of witnessing, a little bit of. <laughs> there it is. Oh wait, not that kind of witnessing. Yeah. <laughs> He did it, um, <laughs> and he did, and uh, he did. <laughs> but I think the best first interview should be with ourselves because we went through an awful lot once yeah, I decided did. to take this seriously. I mean, I've I've been a, a or an ordained minister on paper for over forty years, but 
when you make a commitment to actually do something with the ministry, it's mm-hmm. it. Uh, Satan comes down and says, Sa- "Oh, you think so, do you?" And the funny thing is, everybody expects him to look like Frank Zappa. <laughs> really? He looked like some I always pudgy, him overweight. To- I was gonna say I always expected guy. him to look like the the red demon thing from Legend, but oh you know. well, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. Which is Frank. basically the same thing as in South Park. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love South Park, but I haven't watched that. I haven't watched that show, and it's been a couple of years. We watched them together with uh, My your cousins, cousin. Yeah. That was a few years ago. Yeah. Well, now so. they they don't they don't run every week like they used to. Well, they don't have. Now they're to. like whenever they're like they the feel Simpsons. like it. They've they've been running for. So long now. Yeah. Is The Simpsons still on? Oh, yeah. No. Brand new episodes. No, that's too bad, because I really liked Abu. He was one of my favorite characters, and they had to go all woke and ruin it. Well, I don't watch The Simpsons much anymore, either. (laughs) I just... We don't don't have cable TV. We have... We don't have television. (laughs) We have have the internet, which provides us access to lots of TV shows and movies, and I slipped one in for Melanie that she had never seen before last week we didn't even talk about this no yeah it's a classic walt disney film and it's i've been wanting to see it for a long time yeah. so i'm happy that we found it yeah and um, I sincerely enjoyed it it was it was one of his masterpieces it's not going to be shown on any which of the i don't disney understand channels. because all uh, the reasons they're citing just aren't true well, anyway, it's Song of the South. Yeah. And it was... I Very respectful, not racist at all. Yeah. Really good movie. I, I really yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, it. it was quite well. And the animation and live action, that kind of thing had been done before, ironically, by the Disney Studios mm-hmm. to start with. But Warner Brothers had done it as well. But it was never like that yeah. before. That was brand new. And it was... The music was great. Yeah. The animated segments were funny. Yeah. The story surrounding it was great. Yeah. Um, Uncle Remus was the hero. He yeah. wasn't. Uh, there was nothing. You know, he he was homesteading. This was this took place in the South after the Civil War, mm-hmm. so he was a free man. Yeah. But he wanted to stay where he was, and I guess I. I don't know. Maybe that's why they think it's racist. I have no idea. I, I but don't if you either. if you've grown up thinking, oh, it's racist, I can't watch it. Oh, I challenge you, and I'm not going to tell you where to find it because obviously it's we could not tell gonna, you, but we'd have to kill you. Yeah, but it's it's findable. Okay, I'll tell you. It's out of it's. You don't can, nah, don't do it. Don't okay, do it. I won't nope. tell you. We we could be liable. Mm-mm, no, liable. sir. Re- I don't want to be liable. Mm-mm. Anyway, let's just say it records a VPN, and we'll leave it at that. Not necessarily. It is another Shh. Thing. Yes, it does. Okay, okay it does. <laughs> it's not pirating. It's absolutely positively not pirating. Uh-uh. No, it isn't. <laughs> it just keeps interrupting me, so I'm going to let I know, because you're going to spill beans, and I don't want the beans on my network. It was an alternate bean, though, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to push it. An alternate bean? Yeah, there's there's more than one place you can so find it. So if you're it. you're jumping around, it's a jumping bean? Yes, I'm okay. jumping around like a bean. All right, so okay. you um, alluded to... This, yeah, uh, this is. Uh, I mean, our whole like intro is about lefties actually getting something right. You know, a broken clock is white twice a day. So, but in this case, this is a woman with compassion, a woman with drive, because she's running as a Democrat. She's not going to win. There's no way no. she can't even get on on the ballot in all fifty states. It's. I mean, except maybe as a write-in. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and read this. You read it. I will warn people that I do have the video queued, and mm-hmm. it is really graphic, so um, yeah, I'm sure is, screw tubes is. will take us down, but mm-hmm. I think it needs to be seen. I, I think Far it and does. wide. And oh, we'll talk more about it in a minute. A pro-life Democrat, they exist. A pro. There's a whole network of them. A pro-life Democrat running for president aired an ad on national television Wednesday exposing NBC's Today Show viewers, that's millions of people, by the way. That's millions of dollars. To the horrors of late-term abortion. Teresa Bokonovac, president and founder of Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising. Great name. Pau! Pau! <laughs> doesn't spell anything. Pau! P-A-A-U. No, for, Pau. Who wants it doesn't? 
I was wondering what you were doing. I'd probably, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm doing, I'm doing the uh, Trump <laughs> flappy arms thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, a presidential campaign including deeply disturbing footage of late-term aborted infants aired during the NBC morning program, potentially reaching more than 7 million people, and you can access this through X. Well, you can also Oop. go to counterculturevice.com yes, where we can. will have all of our links, and of course we're going to play it here just because I am that naughty. Bukonovac. A self-avowed atheist debuted the commercial in December of last year. By the way, this is uh, this is from a from Faithwire, and mm-hmm. she has appeared on shows. I don't I don't think a Seven Hundred Club, but shows along those lines to discuss these things. So she's open-minded about this stuff. So she's an atheist, but but her views align with. Christians, okay. Yeah, in, in, in a lot of ways. I don't think she's going to be an atheist much longer. No, well, we'll see. Debuted the commercial in December of last year, and the ad, the progressive presidential candidate declared she recovered the remains of these five babies at a late-term abortion clinic in Washington, D.C. Her remarks come as graphic images of the fetal remains flash across the, scene, the screen. I'm surprised she was it. able to recover them because usually they just sell the parts. Yeah. These are the faces of a genocide supported by Joe Biden and my own Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. She says in the ad, as viewers see images of the president and vice president Kamala Harris, she adds, we can provide for the working class and resist this extremism, urging voters to never vote for a pro-choice Democrat again. It should be noted, Bukanovich told the Christian Post, that's the one, Mm -hmm. she never intended to win the Democratic presidential nomination. Rather, she launched her long shot bid so she would have a platform to expose the evils of abortion to her fellow progressives. She appeared on CBN's Faith Nation, that's the same network that had the 700, Mm -hmm. in 2019 when she first launched her pro-life group. Secular people have always been a part of the pro-life movement, she said at the time, after acknowledging she is an atheist, later adding, we know that the media is not generally on the side of the pro-life movement, but I'm an activist and it is my job to do whatever I can to bring visibility to this cause, and especially those who consider themselves progressive and feminist and aligned with the general ideas and values of equality, nonviolence, mm-hmm. and non-discrimination, who do oppose abortion. And that falls right in with the um, supposed uh, uh, libertarian, you know, do mm-hmm. no harm, but they, they never mm-hmm. seem to align. All right, well, I'm going to give this video a shot. And let's see what happens here. I'm a secular progressive activist. Last year, I recovered the remains of these five babies from an all-term abortion center in Washington, D.C. These are the faces of a genocide supported by Joe Biden and my own Democratic Party. We can provide for the working class and resist this extremism. I am challenging you to never vote for a pro-choice Democrat again. I'm Teresa Bakovinak, pro-life Democrat, running for President of the United States, and I approve this message. I'm a secular progressive actor. Okay, well, she gives them names. Ouch. She actually, <laughs> in other places, has given out the name of the abortion doctor. Oh. I mean, just doxed him up and down. Well, if you're a murderer, yeah. you know, your name should be out there. I mean, yeah. seriously. I, I don't understand why that's even a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, y- you're going against your oath. Do no harm. Right. I mean, I feel the same way about transitioners, you know, that that are out there mutilating and sterilizing children. You are going against your oath, and you should be held accountable. You know, when these kids end up, I mean, the suicide rate goes up, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and yet you're still doing it. Yuppers. Okay, so... We're giving credit where credit is due, and uh, she's a strong lady because she is really taking the slings and arrows for this. Yeah, she is big time. Because boy, is, you do not step off the reservation. They will take named, you I don't kn- down. I don't know his whole name. His first name is Roger, but he's just pansying and oh, he's, TDSing. And he's all just all such over a place. moron. This guy is so stupid. And and I mean, what, who is he? He doesn't even have any followers. Yeah, he's nobody. <laughs> He's nobody. He's a whole blot of nobody. Yeah. So, yeah. There was more. I mean, there, there was another article I was going to read, which I can't find, but it's, uh, but she names the doctor. 
You know, she wow. names the abortionist. She does not Paul, mess around. Calls his, calls his butt out, so yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> Godspeed to her. Even if she doesn't believe in God, she's doing God's work. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're a tool and you don't realize it. If there's one thing we know, our president is a tool and he doesn't realize it. Well. <laughs> I, use, I use those terms differently in different <laughs> Max twitched in here for that one. He liked that one. All right. Well, let's get booty juice his due or due. All right. Uh, booty juice is actually sort of. I, I can't believe that this even has to be a law. Yeah. Why? What happened to customers? Oh, wait, government. That's what happened to customer yeah. service. Government now the, go happened. the government is stepping in to take to uh, correct something the government did. But still, yeah. still, I'm going to give. Pete Buttigieg, and I gave him his proper name, credit for, for doing the right thing. Now, this just proves that I'm not as strict a libertarian as I thought I might be because I, I and 25 times more, Melanie, have been at the mercy of airlines, and we don't... That's why we, we drove to Vegas. That's why we drove to Vegas. We didn't fly because... Too many regulations, too much silliness, and and now that doors are flying off and, and yeah. if wheels are falling, and off if something and went wrong, and we needed a refund. We'd have we you know they'd try to negotiate. They say sucks to be you, yeah. Yeah, I mean this or happened to me. Say, oh here, have have a, a, a voucher to fly on a crappy airline again. You know, yeah, I, that you still have to pay <laughs> to use. I mean that happened <laughs> so, to me with Delta, and yes, yeah, I'm going yeah. to name names Ooh, here. Ooh, she named names. This too. happened to me this with Delta. Delta, they screwed up so bad. I got eighty three thousand miles, but I could never cash them in because they didn't apply to any flights they ever actually had. So I mean, so not only did I have to change airlines so that I could get the hell out of Kansas, and God, I hate that airport. Worst Kansas airport City. ever. Ugh. Yeah, I heard it was pretty bad. Because it's so tiny, you have to go through TSA to use the bathroom and then go through TSA to get back to your gate. And then if they change gates, which they did three times, you have to go back through the gate. It got to the point where, and every time TSA will find something different that yeah. they want to shake you down for. The first time, they didn't like the look of my business cards because they were in an unopened box. So I had to open the box so they could rifle through my did business you, cards. Did you give them a business card to tell them to call you Oh, sometime? I gave them the business um, the second time, oh, no. um, they didn't like my credit card, <laughs> so I had to open up my my because I, I only do carry on. I don't I don't check bags at all. Yeah. And the third time, I can't even remember what it was. It was something stupid. And you know what's really funny? They rifled through my business cards. They said that my credit card had to be. Um, it, it was one of those. Well, it wasn't technically a credit card. It was one of those that has like the measurements and it has a little tool that that you can use as a screwdriver. Right. And, right. So. Completely obviously legal. not a weapon Comple completely I legal. bought it at that airport right I literally it's bought it at that it airport it says on the package that it's 100% legal it's TSA legal compliant and, uh, it TSA says it right compliant. on it no yeah. it says it right on the actual object but they made me throw it away I bought it at that airport and um, I can't remember what the third one was but it got to the point where they're making me you know take off clothes and this and that and I'm like hey Mary how's it going because I'd seen her so many uh -huh. times we knew each other it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Mm. And then finally, they just canceled the flights altogether. Leave it to me to be <laughs> in Kansas, and my flights are canceled because of tornadoes in Denver. That has got to be a once-in-a-lifetime shot. <laughs> I am literally in Kansas City at the Kansas airport, and I cannot fly out of Kansas because Denver has tornadoes stupid Denver. So yeah, I ended up, I would think I was there for like 28 hours. I mean, it just got to the point where I just wanted to start killing people. And they don't have any food to speak of. Although one of their, I mean, it was under construction when I was there many years ago. One of their kiosks did have wine. And the, guy that, the guy that worked <laughs> at the kiosk saw what I was going through. And let's just say that every bottle of wine that you get the little itty bitty mini bottles, yeah. Every ten dollar mini bottle of wine he gave me, an extra one was kind of snuck into the bag as he handed it over to me. Nice. I make friends like that. That's how I roll. Nice. All right. So, what did Booty Juice do that we appreciate? Well, it was your turn to read. Oh, it is my turn to read. Yes. Okay. Well, good news for airline travel. Well, the the, the headlight's been up, so it's not like this is any news, but. Uh, the Department of Transportation on Wednesday announced it's rolling out new rules that require airlines to automatically give cash refunds to passengers for canceled and significantly delayed flights. 
Yeah, I love it when they delay the flight and mm. you're stuck in the airport and have nowhere to go. And they won't even give you a voucher for a hotel or anything. They won't they give just... you a bag of peanuts to chew on. Y- well, you can't have peanuts because somebody might be allergic. Uh, I'm using that as an example. Okay, potato yeah. chips, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> this is a big day for America's flying public. They used to just do that. Uh-huh. I can't believe that we... And, uh, transportation, da, 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 news kind of, uh, the new rules which require prompt refunds are the biggest expansion of passenger rights in the department's history. How about passenger rights like I shouldn't have to get strip searched to go through the TSA when Biden's invading army don't even have to have ID? I think we should take it one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Airlines can now decide how long a delay must be before a refund is issued. However, these new rules define significant delay standards that trigger refunds. These delays covered would be more than three hours for domestic flights and more than six hours for international flights. Which is reasonable. Okay, but more than. It has to be more than or equal to, because more than three hours could be, well, it's been 67 hours. That's more than three hours. Well, but at the 65th hour, we're still not giving you a, a refund. No, it needs to be more than or equal to. Does nobody understand math? <laughs> this includes tickets purchased directly from airlines, travel agents, and third party sites such as so yeah, they, they're not going to get away with the oh, we bought it at orbit. So yeah, yeah that, no. that's been another thing, too. The yeah. DOT rules lay out that passengers will be entitled to a refund if their flight is canceled or significantly changed and they do not accept alternate transportation or travel credits offered. Yeah, that's another thing is, you know, when I pay extra for a window seat Mm -hmm. or, you know, one of those with extra leg room, Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, well, we changed flights, and now it's a smaller plane, so now you're stuck in a middle seat. It's like, um, no. (laughs) (laughs) Don't put the fat girl in the middle seat. It's not nice to anybody, including the fat girl. Okay, besides, I like windows. I like watching takeoff and landing and clouds and the stuff and yeah, it's the, cool. it's the cool. guy on the wing ripping out the, the yeah, engine. The, and, and the ape. From the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was much better in the remake because it was like this really scary looking thing. Uh. Okay, the refunds must be issued within seven days. It must be in cash unless the passenger chooses another form of compensation. Airlines can no longer issue refunds in forms of vouchers or credits. Yay! Because we never get to use those vouchers or credits. Airlines will have six, oh, especially since they put an expiration date on them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was the most ridiculous part of all. I mean... If you, oh, if we screwed up. Here's this already expired voucher <laughs> that only applies to certain flights. Yeah. Yeah, passengers deserve to get their money back when an airline owes them without headaches or haggling. Absolutely. Okay, so Booty Juice did actually do something right. We, we have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, due. There's, there's, there's other improvements as well, but that's the primary one. So, yeah, good, good on you, Mayor Pete. Thank you. Yay, Mayor Pete. Okay, Mayor All Pete. Right. All right. Well, let's head on into one of my favorite segments. And let's pray this actually works. <laughs> Counterculture Wise is proud to present News of the Weird and Wonderful. Here are your hosts, Melanie Hope and Jim Monis. Now, I've known Melanie for a long time now, and she is... Despite her decided right-wing leanings, she's definitely a tree hugger. I would consider myself am, a tree yeah. hugger too. I love, I, I love. I am nature. definitely a tree hugger. Yeah. This guy took it to a whole other <laughs> level. A Ghana man studying forestry in Alabama set a world record for most trees hugged in an hour <laughs> when he hugged. 1,000. The look on his face is hilarious. 23 trees. Dig that, people. 1,123 trees in an hour. And he's like, this, uh, that must have been about 1,100 because he does not have a joyous look on his face yeah, at all. He's, he's, I'm tired of tree yeah. hugging. I hate trees. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. He's from Ghana. He doesn't have an accent like that. I'm, yeah, I don't know what a Ghana accent sounds like. Abu Bakar Tahiru, 29. I believe Ghana is one of the um, countries where their, their national language is French. Ah. But don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Anyway, his name is Abu Bakar Tahiru, 29 years old. He became interested in nature conservation while growing up in a farming community in Tapa, Ghana. He's pursuing a master's degree in forestry at Auburn University. Oh, wow. The record attempt... Okay, requ- their national language is English. Okay. 
<clears throat> the record attempt required that Tahiru wrap both of his arms around each tree in a close embrace without causing any damage to the trees. Wow, you can mm-hmm. damage a tree by hugging it? Yes. Okay. No tree could be hugged more than once, requiring Tahiru to move <laughs> quickly between each hug. Tahiru was fasting for Ramadan at the time of his record attempt, which presented another challenge, so he had no energy. Oh, Whoa. that's why, that, that make, that, uh, now we understand the face. Yeah. Not being able to drink water throughout the attempt posed a significant challenge, especially given the physical exertion required, he told Guinness World Records. However, this also proved to be helpful in a way, as there was no need to pause for water breaks, allowing me to continue the attempt uninterrupted from start to finish. Averaging 19 trees per minute, Tahiro easily surpassed the minimum requirement of 700 trees to establish the Who record. Who sets out to hug a number of trees? I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> I record, mean, I, I guess it made a name for him. Yeah. The record raises awareness of the importance of trees and environmental conservation was the next was the next uh, paragraph, which okay. underscores what So he had to find said. some place where there were 1,123 trees. Yep. And just go, love you tree, 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 love you tree. Love you tree. Uh, and there he is, hugging trees. Hugging trees. So I can no longer qualify as a tree hugger because that dude took all he, the... Um, uh, he took all the steam he, out of the hugging of trees. He took all the steam out of it. But now that Ramadan's over, he can... Uh, go eat something, yeah. <laughs> go eat something from a tree, like a <laughs> apple or a Okay, bear or an apple or a bear. <laughs> all right. Crystals of gold. Gold. Let's go to Antarctica. No, I okay. guess so. It sounds like a dream, but it's true. An Antarctical gold rains from the sky. You just have to freeze to death to get to it. Tucked in amongst the glaciers, fiery Mount Erubus is the southernmost active volcano on Earth, providing a bit of heat amid the frozen landscape. The frozen continent features 138 volcanoes, according to a 2017 study, with around nine of them reported as active. Kaboom. With a summit elevation of 12,448 feet, Mount Erubus is the most well-known. And there she blows. Indeed. (laughs) Quite literally. Erubus is one of three volcanoes that form Ross Island, and it's said that it was erupting when it was discovered in 1841 during the voyage of Captain James Clark Ross, who carried out the important magnetic surveys in the Arctic and Antarctic and discovered the Ross Sea, in the Victoria Land region of Antarctica. HMS Rubis was the name of one of his ships. Oh. Scientists still observe the volcano through the Mount Erubus Volcano Observatory and conduct field campaigns to look for extreme life forms. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> poka, poka, poka. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, I'm sure that's not what they mean. Although that is how the you know, movie ended. The largest Antarctic settlement, McMurdo Station, operated by the United States, is located about 25, s- about 25 south of Mount, 25, I'm going to say miles, <laughs> south of Mount Erubus and is within sight of the volcano. Get to the gold! <laughs> Satellite images of the volcano reveal a Children lava lake that's gold. been bubbling since at least 1972. A lava lake in the middle of the ice. The volcano regularly pumps out plumes of gas and stream and has been known to eject boulders of partially molten rock known as volcanic bombs. Kaboom. While volcanic bombs are exciting, it's the bursts of gas spraying tiny crystals of metallic gold that surprise scientists who estimate the volcano spews an a- around 80 grams of gold a day, and that's worth about $6,000. And you can't have it. <laughs> I want it. I want it. No. The gold has been found hundreds of miles away from Mount Erubus. Antarctic researchers have detected traces of the gold dust in ambient air up to 621 miles away from the volcano. That is fascinating. All righty. Well. You sure pick weird dudes. I pick weird dudes. He looks happy, though. God He's love happy, him. He's happy, and he would, be, he would be too if he, well, anyway. A British man ran a distance of one mile through the water in a swimming pool. In an attempt to break a Guinness World Record, okay, that's so how fat tree, people run, tree hugging and, 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 and running through and a pool swimming pool. Running, yeah, that's how fat people run. Though we we get in there and all our fat floats, so we can like, yeah, I can do this, bookity bookity bookity. Yeah. Anyway, and, I mean, he's one of us. <laughs> I won't deny that. Adam Lopez, thirty-seven, ran sixty-three laps in the eighty-two foot pool at Nuffield Health in Norwich, England, on Tuesday, 
with a time of 35 minutes and 24 seconds. I could do that. That sounds that sounds slow, but it's not. Lopez bested the current Guinness World Record by four and a half minutes, but evidence from his attempt still needs to be reviewed by officials before, before becoming official. Lopez said he started exercising in the pool after being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Good for him. He's probably helping himself quite a bit. Quite a bit. This, it gets better. When someone tells you your life's under threat, it changes excuse me, it changes your complexion on how you look at your mortality. He Don't told burp BBC. in the mic. Jeez, Jim. <laughs> we're a, we're a, uh, uh, great. Now I lost no, the we're word. not. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not. He told the BBC, sometimes we take our lives for professional, granted. Professional, Pro- professional organization. No, ah, professional. I couldn't Pro- think of the word. That's how professional we are. Yeah. <laughs> we're pros, yo. <laughs> sometimes we take our lives for granted and our health for granted, and we shouldn't mm-hmm. sometimes do that. Still, we should look after ourselves Look after our body because it's the only place you've got to live. That's true. This is the best part. The record attempt raised money for a five-year-old girl named Grace who was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. The money will go toward home upgrades for the girl, including a hydrotherapy pool. Oh, that's so sweet. That is, that is cool. Oh, good for him. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Lopez. Very sweet of you. Mr. Adam Lopez. All right. Well, speaking of kaboom, we got yeah. hugging trees, exploding volcanoes, and now bombs! Bombs, 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 bombs. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bigger because it's too little. Salt Lake City, following a neighborhood evacuation and holiday on two. I'm taking the Salt, Salt Lake City. Okay. Oh, wow, it did go kaboom. Oh. A, s- <laughs> <laughs> a second broader... Evacuation just after midnight. Crews with Unified Fire Authority destroyed a collection of what was described as ancient dynamite that was found inside a home. They couldn't, like, take it out in, like, a lockbox or something? Don't know. Wow. The mode of destruction detonation. But it wasn't just the dynamite that was disposed of. The house where it was found was also destroyed due to the nature of the explosives, their age, and the improper way in which they were stored. (laughs) Dude's already dead, but I guess he's lucky he lived as long as he did. (laughs) UFA Assistant Chief Riley Pilgrim said the home belonged to a woman whose husband recently died. That's she a told cool authorities name, Riley Pilgrim. Riley Pilgrim, yeah. She told authorities that her husband received an inheritance more than four decades ago from his father. It wasn't an average inheritance, though. Pilgrim said the man was handed down between thirty and thirty-five pounds of explosives. It didn't appear to be anything nefarious. It literally appeared to be a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> uncommon hobby and a very unsafe hobby unless you really know what you're doing. It didn't seem like there was any ill intent here. <laughs> well, I hope not. It was just unfortunately stored in an improper way and aged over the years, kind of like Biden's documents. The person Whoa. who's living in the home didn't know what to do with it. Even if they were new at the time, which fire officials don't believe is the case, that dynamite would have been at least 40 years old. An old dynamite that's not properly stored has a tendency to become extremely volatile just like Biden. The older dynamite typically gets it, when it crystallizes, it becomes more prone to detonation. These people are lucky they lived as long as they did. He said it can literally detonate by being dropped, mishandled, exposed to heat, bright light, perhaps. Yikes, even light? Yeah. So they lost their, she lost her home? The woman came across the dynamite and asked her friend to help her move it. (laughs) The friend said, um, no, uh, hard pass. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. The homeowner unfortunately had inherited some things when her present passed away that she didn't know what to do with. Yeah, I wouldn't First know what to do with a bunch uh, of aging uh, dynamite either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First responder, go bury it in a hole, I hope. First responder said given the aging condition of the dynamite, any number of factors could have set it off if they had attempted to move it off site. Just we couldn't just take a titanium box and surround it and let it blow up inside and you go Pff. no, that doesn't work. Mm-mm. With its location in the couple's basement, the decision was made to detonate the explosives where they were in an as controlled as possible environment. So what happens to her? Does she get like insurance for her home? How does this work? It was the lesser of two evils. He said keeping the dynamite inside the home and detonating it there was the best course of action to protect the neighborhood, the public, and our first responders. The outcome isn't going to be great either way you do it. The woman was allowed to remove some of her possessions. She's been sleeping in that house all this time, and now they're like, mm, okay, if you want your pillow, I guess you can go in there. 
some of her possessions her, before her evacuation. Deodorant. Yeah, <laughs> orders were called and plans were made for the detonation. Crews knew the home would be a total loss. What about the neighbors' homes? Efforts what were made them? to keep Let's the explosion totally contained, <laughs> but even with all precautionary measures and protections in place, the force of the explosion still caused damage to neighboring properties, <laughs> blowing out windows across multiple homes and leaving several with minor fire damage, hopefully all covered by insurance. Unfortunately, you still have to pay a um, copay before you can get your insurance coverage. Had that gone off when we were moving the material, my guess would be probably six or seven homes would have been heavily damaged or destroyed. Yipe. Yipe. This poor woman. The woman's identity was not released. Her home and financial situation in the wake of the explosion wasn't known. Uh, here's the news article written in AP style based on the provided information. It's just repeating everything that we just said. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. There were no injuries. That's good. Well, that's good. The poor woman. Well, she's going to have to have a talk with her husband when she meets him upstairs. I'm yeah. Telling you, that's, that's a bit of a... I feel sorry for the completely innocent neighbors. That just like <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do we do to deserve this? Yeah. Nothing. And then where is she going to live? I mean, that was her home. And I'm sure there yeah. were lots of memories. And Wow. All right. Hmm. All right. Next. Ah, good day. Hey, Happy bulls. upside down waggy face. Upside waggy down face. Happy waggies. Happy waggies. Happy waggies. The happiest of waggies. Sadie wogs. does that all the time. All right. Well, you know that we love our Goldens because we had one for many, many years. Those of us who started listening with us over seven years ago when we first started Counterculture Wise know that Abby was a big part of our lives for 17 years. A big part years. of our show, too. Yeah, a big part of our show. And now we got little Saders, who's just a year old, and you know, very different personality, but still has a lot of the great yeah. tendencies. All right, consummate family dog, golden retriever, boxy-headed lug nut of a pup that loves everyone and is always happy. I'd say that about Sadie too. She's yeah. pretty happy. All right, off you go, Jim. So, the golden retriever. It's a good dog. Sort of the consummate family dog, just a big boxy-headed lug nut of a pup that loves everything and is always happy. Where have I heard that before? I just, yeah, I just said that. Huh? Sounds really so familiar. So when you get several hundred golden retrievers together all in one place, and when you put bandanas on their necks just for good measure, well, nobody's arguing about that. Yay, puppers! Okay. So, so why do all these people gather with hundreds of their furry little buddies? As you might have... Okay, there's... Um, I did not know there was such a thing as a golden retriever meetup, but now that I know, I cannot stay away. Aww, I wish I would have known about this when I was... As you might have guessed, it's to honor one particular golden retriever. Hundreds of golden retrievers gathered to celebrate Spencer. Spencer! The golden name, the, the official doggy of the Boston Marathon and the impact that the late dog had on the famous race. Mm. I the think Boston, we talked about Spencer before. When I think we did, actually. The around. Boston uh, Athletic Association declared Spencer the official dog of the Boston Marathon in 2022. Golden Retriever became known among marathon attendees and the world for showing up on race day at his favorite spot, National Mass, rain or shine, to cheer on runners and take photos with his fans. Oh, there's a great video of the late, great Spencerini there. Spencer first became known to Bostonians in 2013 when he started showing up at the city's marathon after the brutal terrorist bombing that year. He subsequently became a fixture at the event, particularly after he began appearing with Boston strong flags clamped between his noble jaws. <laughs> the pup was so beloved that people would literally stop running the race, something race experts say is not a great idea if you want to win. He's a beautiful dog, In order too. to pet him. He Alas, the pup passed away last year from doggy cancer, though his legacy clearly lives on, including a recently unveiled statue in Boston. It's Aww. a statue of Woggy with the flags there saying Boston strong. Aww. And of course, the statues unveiling, there were plenty of well, well, you, you know, know, lots of goldens. Lots of goldens. Tons of Abigails there. <laughs> good boy, Spencer. Okay. Oh, good boy. What a sweetheart. What yeah. a sweetheart. Okay, so we saw a little bit of video there. Yes. Um, all right. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> Once again, Taylor Swift has set the music world abuzz with her much-anticipated release of her album, The Tortured Poets Department. So on the day of release, the Sioux Falls Police Department decided to have some fun with it. This is what they wrote on their viral Facebook post. For immediate release, 
The Sioux Falls Police Department is currently responding to a high volume of noise disturbance calls. At this time, all these calls appear to be related as upon arrival to each call, officers are hearing the same loud music emanating from each residence, followed by cries of, I heart you, Taylor, and this new album is so 100. We have tried to speak to the involved parties to comply with acceptable noise levels, but they are refusing to comply as they state, Swifties don't turn the music down when a new album drops. Followed by, we don't listen to the Sioux Falls Police Department. We only li listen to the Tortured Poets Department. <laughs> With that said, we have been able to rescue a few dads and brothers from the moms and daughters that have been holding them hostage, playing this music on repeat for the last several hours inside their homes. We will continue to respond as we are able, but we foresee a long few days to deal with this matter. <laughs> Cute. The post garnered thousands of likes and shares. If dads and brothers say they don't like it, they're lying, one man commented. I can confirm I'm part of this noise disturbance, another commenter wrote. I just heard it coming from a police car, one person <laughs> said. Cute. Not missing a beat, the Sioux Falls Police Department posted a follow-up message the next day, cleverly incorporating many of Swift's song titles. Dear Swifties, I know after the posting from yesterday that the Sioux Falls Police Department that you may have had some bad, bad blood, blood towards us, but you are just going to have to shake, shake it, it off. off. Never in our wildest, wildest dreams, dreams did I think you would get that upset. Quite frankly, you, you need, need to, to calm, calm down, down just a bit. It was just a joke. You know what we mean. mean. <laughs> Thought you might like our style. Wow. We had too much time and needed to fill in some blank, blank space. space on our social media feeds. I know that you are thinking, we are never, never getting ever, back, ever, together, back together, never, ever, ever. But the SFPD and the Swifties will unite once again and ride off on a white, white horse, horse in a lavender haze in the very near future. Please enjoy your weekend, and we will keep the city of Sioux Falls safe and Good sound. P.S. Try listening to some Tim, Tim McGraw. McGraw. He is a bit more our type, so please don't hate, 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 hate. Respectfully, your friends. <laughs> oh, that sounds like they're having fun. You know, that that's what was, social that media is cute. for. That's cute. That was cute. Cute. I haven't heard the new album. Rubber I don't know. I'm not that. I haven't that heard any of her albums. I, I've, I've not too conversant with her music. Yeah. I'm, I, but I I'm just, curious. I, I, I just know Shake It Off. Yeah, man. Rubber Ducky, you're, you're the one. one. But up, but up. This is amazing. This is like one yeah, of those. This, this is this is really especially really since really it was accidental. Song. Indeed, a rubber ducky that escaped a failed world record race <laughs> 18 years ago has been found by a teen washed up on a beach 423 miles away. I don't think it failed. <laughs> I think it won. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where they were. Anyway, the record attempt held in Dublin in the summer of 2006 was part of World Duck Race Ireland, which corralled 150,000 rubber ducks at the starting line in the River Liffey. Despite organizers' attempts to collect them all, several escaped into the sea. This one was found on the island of Stonsray in Orkney, Scotland. Philip Miller, 13, stumbled across the rubber duck while walking the dog and brought it back home to show his mom. He didn't really look at it. He just put it in his pocket, said Marianne. I had a look at it and saw the writing. It said, World Record Duck Race, Ireland 2006. And so he got a bit excited and started Googling it. <laughs> each duck was sponsored for the race that required each duck to pass under five bridges, with the fastest one declared the winner, earning its sponsor a trip to the United States. Oh, wow. Other ducks that flew the coop in the race have been found in Morecambe and the Isle of Wight, with one even being discovered in Sweden oh, in, wow. 20, in 2016. It's always fascinating finding things on the shore, a bit like messages, mm -hmm. a message on a bottle, said Marion. You always wonder what the story is and where it's come from, so it's really special to be able to learn about its journey. It was so long ago as well, 18 years ago, and the writing is still intact on it and even has a number on it. As the find was posted on social media, commenters began wondering about the future of the duck but Marion says there's no chance she's throwing it out. I don't think we'll keep him in the bath, but we're definitely going to keep it on the shelf. <laughs> Cute. He looks like he's seen a little bit of a uh, wear. I would, too, and... if I were in a water for... F well, I mean, yeah. that's your job as a rubber ducky. That's, that's true. That's literally your... That's All true. right. Well, let's end this on a high note. Uh, I uh, love kitties. Uh, a tale of two tigers connected to the underworld of big cat breeding in a murder-for-hire case has concluded with a happy ending. This is one thing I did watch during the pandemic. <laughs> I did not watch that show. Yeah. Their names are Jem and Zoe. They were rescued from Tiger King Park in Oklahoma back in May 2021. The name Tiger King may be recognized by many who have seen the true crime documentary series detailing the life of former private zookeeper Joe Exotic, who is now a convicted felon. 
and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. The three season series peers into the community of big cat conservationists, collectors, private zoos, and animal sanctuaries that span the country. In short, Joe Exotic had a rivalry with a woman named Carol Baskin, the owner of Big Cat Rescue. Baskin had accused Exotic of abusing and exploiting the big cats for personal gain, and then she killed her husband. The feud ended with Exotic behind bars, where he's serving a 21-year-old, 21-year-old? 21 prison, 21 year, I don't know why I stuck the word old in there, prison sentence. Court records state he attempted to hire two men to murder Baskins, a murder-for-hire plot that was unsuccessful. Since Exotic's downfall, his big cat park has been shut down due to ongoing violations of the Endangered Species Act. Rescue teams came in to rehome the animals once under his care. The founder of Lions, Tigers, and Bears, oh LTB, my. an exotic animal, an animal, an animal, 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 rescue and sanctuary in Alpine made it her mission to help. Bobby Brink and the LTB rescue team, along with other sanctuaries, used trucks and trailers to rescue a total of 69 big cats from the park. The animals were then transferred to reputable sanctuary. Sanctu okay, my you mouth is not working. Yeah, my mouth is not working. The animals were then transferred <laughs> to reputable <laughs> sanctuary across the U.S. That's when Jem and Zoe made their way to San Diego County, finding their new home at LTB. According to Brink, the long road to recovery for these tigers was just beginning at that point. Their condition was dire, marked by severe malnutrition, oh, emaciation, dull skin, and other issues, LTB explained. The trauma from long-term abuse led to the development of uncharacteristic behavior, such as not eating for days at a time. Wow, a tiger not eating for days at a time. That is uh, mm -hmm. uncharacteristic. LTB's founder said it took a long time for Jem and Zoe to start displaying normal behavior. Now, three years later, LTB told Fox 5 in San Diego that the tigers are finally living their best lives in their forever home. Well, they look they fat and healthy now. And are adapting beautifully despite past abuse. Yeah, they look, they look very healthy and happy now. Missions like these are impossible without the support from compassionate individuals, LTB said, while referring to generous donors who have given financial support to the rescue. The sanctuary is hosting a fundraising event called Wild in the Country on May 18th from 2 to 6 p.m. There will be a silent and live auction as well as dinner and entertainment. Brink said this is their biggest fundraiser of the year, and she encourages San Diegans to join in on the fun. For those who wish to see Jem and Zoe thriving at LTB, the sanctuary can be visited by reservation only. You know, never mind the San Diego Zoo or SeaWorld. We go to San Diego. That's where I want to go. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. If we go to San Diego. I, <laughs> the last time I was in San Diego, I was running to get onto a flight to fly me away from boot camp. So that was... Oh, look at this. Harvey Weinstein was hospitalized after he... Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just returned to New York from upstate <laughs> prison. Oh no! Anyway, forget him. All right. Well, let's uh, let Chuck check in from uh, from beyond, since we didn't play it last week, and then of course we'll have a new one coming up. Hey, we're getting a flood watch flood right watch. here in our own little hometown. Yep, certainly says we're getting a flood There's watch. There's an abundance of water right now. No, we got more than. More than we need. More than we need. For a change. We got tornado <laughs> warnings yesterday, so yeah. yeah, it's been doing just about everything it can. Yep, yep, yep. All right, folks, we're gonna see you out with Chuck, and we'll be back with this is why we can't have nice things and several other segments. So stay tuned. <laughs> And now, CCW News presents, holy crap, this is actually happening. Malarkey, Tomfoolery, and Monkey Shines edition, April 21st, 2024. I'm Chuck U. Farley. The big news this week is the continuation of the sham Trump trial in New York City. After defying his gag order, buying everyone at Chick-fil-A their dinner, and nonchalantly raising over a million dollars in small donations during the very first day, the only way anyone could outshine Trump was to set themselves on fire. Meanwhile, with the help of an army of rhinos, the House passed yet another ridiculous bill, $95 billion to be exact, to protect everyone else's borders but our own. Amazon wowed the world with their better-than-self-checkout technology that allowed shoppers to simply put their chosen merchandise in their purses, bags, or carts and walk right out of the store. With Amazon's cutting-edge tech, they'd know exactly what you took and what to charge your account. 
How did they perform this witchcraft, you might ask? Their advertised advanced AI? An intricate combination of magnets and 5G? Lasers? No, it turns out they have a staff in India who watches the instant replays and charges accordingly. I swear, I am not making this up. As if having the federal government out to get you isn't enough, RFK Jr.'s own family betrayed him. Fifteen members of the extended Kennedy family endorsed King Brandon over their own brother because he doesn't have a chance and Orange, Orange Man, Man Bad. Bad. His sister, Carrie Kennedy, quipped, I chose to endorse Joe Biden because his record more closely fits the ideology and legacy of the Kennedy name. Frankly, Bobby Jr. just doesn't fit in. He pays attention to science, isn't actively laundering any money, and hasn't even drowned a single secretary. Finally, the brain donor-in-chief had a banner week as he regaled us with such quips as, Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? After which the audience clapped like seals in a circus. He bragged, I made it clear to the Israelis, don't move on Haifa, which is an easy task as Haifa is in Israel. Finally, while shambling through Pennsylvania, King Brandon told several whoppers, including his promise that no one making over $400,000 will pay a cent more in taxes. He backed up his totally believable statement by saying he himself has never made that amount of money, even though his public tax returns reveal he not only made much more than that, but sometimes in the tens of millions. Oh yes, and let's not forget that $400,000 happens to be the exact amount of the annual salary of the President of the United States. Did he forget, or is he trying to tell us something? The cherry on the hot fib Sunday was a spine-tingling fever dream in which Joe's uncle, Ambrose Finnegan, whom he somehow called Uncle Bosey, even though they never actually met, joined the military on D-Day, June 6, 1944, even though he died on May 14, 1944, was shot down while flying a single-engine plane, even though he wasn't a pilot, the plane was an A-20 bomber, and it went down due to mechanical problems, and was eaten by cannibals in New Guinea which would have required cannibals with scuba gear since the plane went down at sea. Biden told his titanically tall tale not once, but twice on the same day. White House Press Secretary Jean-Luc Diversity Hire chalked up the ridiculous ruses to Biden having a, quote, emotional moment, end quote. I swear, I am not making this up. And what was the Associated Press's take on the Cabbage and Chief's meandering mendaciousness? Quote, Biden is off on details of his uncle's World War II death as he calls Trump unfit to lead the military. For CCW News, this has been holy crap. This is actually happening. I am Chuck U. Farley. Good night, and may God help us. have nice things. So tell me, why can't we have nice things? Oh, there's so many reasons. So many reasons. <laughs> so many reasons. <laughs> well, let's start with this one. And I don't know if this even counts as a not nice thing. It seems hmm. like he's kind of a nice guy. I don't know. Am well, I weird? I sometimes I I don't know where to put a a story where it would. It's uh, okay. It, well, if it involves yay, it involves yay. <coughs> it's gonna be an I don't know what to think about it story. <laughs> yeah, well, this one comes down pretty hard on one side in my view, but okay, it's just I've not seen any indication of this happening anywhere else. But here we go. In what has been nothing short of a dramatic fall from faith, rapper and entrepreneur Kanye West, who once touted an epic salvation story, has announced plans to launch a pornography studio. Seriously? 
No, don't do it. Brittany De La Mora, a former porn star who has found freedom in Christ, emphatically urged West in an upcoming episode of CBN's Faith vs. Culture. I think that Kanye is such a creative genius. I believe that his gifts are given to him by God, and it's devastating to see him wanting to use his gifts to serve Satan and not God. It's really heartbreaking. Wow, that is... West... She came 40, down hard on him. Yeah. West, 46, announced the venture, which he repeated is reportedly launching with longtime pornographer Mike Moss, the ex-husband of adult film star Stormy Daniels. Um, wow, where have I heard that name before? Um, Via X. I, I protest the use of the word star. No, I, I don't Nobody know Nobody had ever heard of her before. I don't know how, how well she was. Only because she got was. paid watched... to sue Trump, which she never, ever actually slept with. She herself admits that. I think the Mike Cohen and she had a thing going on, but, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Well, Horseface owes him a refund. I don't... (laughs) To be fair, she's got a very pretty face. I don't think she has a horse face at all. Well, when you're that awful of a human being, it kind of fits her. The Donda rapper has since deleted his social media, seemingly in response to the intense backlash he's He's faced okay, over I don't the news. like it when they use different words for the name of the person, the Donda rapper. So, are they talking about this Mike guy, or are they talking about Ye? Honey, they're talking. I don't about know what Donda rapper. is. Donda's a song he did. Uh, well, how would I know that? I know about as many rap songs as I do porn stars. I can name Stormy, and I can name the Debbie Broad, and that chick from Dallas. And that's about all the porn stars Debbie that I did know. Dallas, that was the name of the movie. See, that's how well I know porn. <sighs> see, I see porn. The Devil porn. and Miss Jones. But I all see stuff porn. from the 60s and 70s. This isn't even anything yeah, new. Yeah, it was before my time. I see porn the same way as I see the Food Channel. Why do I want to watch somebody else doing something that I want to be doing myself? I don't want to watch you eat bread. I want to eat the bread. I don't want to watch you make chicken marsali. I want to. I want to make it myself, and I probably pronounced that wrong. Yeah, it's mar- marsala, but I was going to let it pass. Yeah, well, see, that's how well I know marsali <laughs> and porn stars. So my knowledge of marsali and porn stars are about uh, equal. Marsala, marsali is uh, <laughs> Italian Indian food. Actually, he sounds. <laughs> Marsali sounds like a famous son. What are they called? Mime artist. <laughs> the rapper has since deleted his social media, seemingly in response to the intense backlash he's faced over the news. So wait, Ye deleted all of his social media? Yeah. Huh. As a, Because of all the backlash to his deciding to do a porn And And thing. look how hard I noticed that. I just noticed that all over the place. I mean, I noticed that so hard. Hmm. Huh. Critics have wondered how West, who in 2019 released his Jesus is King album and began hosting what he dubbed Sunday services, evangelistic events with gospel music and messages, could launch a platform to produce and host pornographic content. I think he needs help. He's, oh, he's been, uh, yeah, very he's much been so. off for quite a few years now. He has, he has also in the past opened up about being addicted to pornography from an early age after discovering one of his father's Playboy magazines at just five years old. Oh, so that's like an alcoholic opening a liquor store. Mm-hmm. Playboy was my gateway into full-blown pornography addiction, he said in a past interview with Apple Music's Zane Lowe. Well, it explains why he married a Kardashian. Yep. They're as fake as any porn star. My dad had a Playboy left out at age five, and it's affected almost every choice I made for the rest of my life. From age five to now having to kick the habit, and it just presents itself in the open like it's okay. And I stand up and say, you know, it's not okay. Well, Playboy is downright tame and artistic to, compared to what's out there now. Yeah. Well, it's not even a magazine anymore. It's all online. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's uh-huh. gone. That, you know, for all intents. No more pages so. stuck together, huh? No more pages stuck together. <laughs> West even credited his faith in God for the strength to beat things that had a full control of me. As recently well, as... Well, it sounds to me like he was beating things that yeah. had control of him. <laughs> I was waiting. I didn't have to wait long. As recently as September 2022, the Yeezy founder and father of four opened up about his being addicted to pornography, which he said at the time destroyed his family. He and ex-wife Kim Kardashian finalized their divorce in November of that year. Dude, Hollywood you is a- married a freaking Kardashian. Short of, like... Changing genders, what could she have possibly... Oh, wait. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> Hollywood is a giant brothel, he wrote in a post on his since-deleted Instagram account. 
Pornography destroyed my family. I deal with the addiction. I'm not going to let it happen to Northy in Chicago. Is that the names of their children? Probably. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. Adding further well, confusion... I guess it's better than Blanket and Apple. Not by much. Only slightly. I mean, you know, once Chicago's no longer a toddler, I mean, Chicago, Chicago, toddler. <laughs> Never mind. Adding further confusion, West is the founder of Donda Academy... Just Donda don't feed your kid beans or he'll be known forever as the Windy City. <laughs> there you go. A private, unaccredited Christian school whose motto is to be a reflection of God's glory in the world. Yeah, good to The school that, was please. reportedly shuttered abruptly in 2022 after West made anti-Semitic remarks. But its current status is unknown as parents and students tied to the academy are required to sign non-disclosure agreements, keep the location of the school private, and refrain from any public discussion about the school's existence. Wow, that's not wow, creepy that at all. Wow, that sounded like he had a guilty conscience before he even opened the silly thing. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Nonetheless, the latest development, West's desire to launch a porn outlet, is both puzzling and discouraging to those who are inspired by his dramatic conversion to Christianity. De La Mora, who We spent don't need ambassadors like him, though. He kind of... <laughs> Kind of screwed the pooch. Well, <laughs> we mean, don't know if he's done that. But anyway. Uh, well, I'm sure he'd know, tell I, us because he's quite vocal. Best, some of the best witnesses for Christ are people who've gone through this. Well, gone through it, but he hasn't gone through it. He's mm. going through it, and yeah. he's doing it quite publicly. Yeah. Dale Amora, who spent seven years in the porn industry before coming to faith in Jesus, believes West's dark turn harkens back to his exposure and continued struggle with a porn addiction. I'd like to read her story. She sounds interesting. Well, the, I think there's a link to the video on this on this article, and we'll find out more about her. Uh, it's definitely taken a toll on him. She said, that is so traumatic for a five-year-old to see those types of images, and then the fact that it was left untreated, unprocessed, and so he continued watching pornography. And we know that studies show that pornography affects the brain the same way that cocaine does, so it releases the same dopamine in the receptors. Mm-hmm. Much like drug addicts need to escalate their substance abuse over time in order to achieve the same high as their bodies become accustomed to their drug use, those consuming pornography commonly turn toward increasingly yep. deviant content to achieve the same degree of arousal and satisfaction. It's true. It gets to the point where you can't get aroused at all anymore. This is a long article, but I am going to read the whole thing because okay. it's, it's important. It's, yeah. Um, that's why people are left watching hours on hours of pornography, or they get deep and dark into the world of pornography, said De La Mora. They just get deeper into the sin. That's what we've seen with Kanye. Ultimately, West's reversion should serve, she urged, as a clarion call to Christians not to place their faith and hope in a person, but to keep our hope and our faith in God, the mm -hmm. one true source of redemption. That's why I get so frustrated when people say, oh, you just worship Trump. It's like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And how dare you? How dare you say that? that that's not how this works. <clears throat> I was in the adult film industry for seven years, De La Moore said. I battled with massive addictions, heroin, cocaine, all kinds of things, and Jesus set me free through seeking him every single day. Yeah, you'd have to do that to do what she did. Yeah. West's dramatic paradigm shift came, De La Moore believes, because he failed to trust God completely and was overcome by the weight of a burgeoning faith with the eyes of the world upon him. When God didn't answer his prayers for reconciliation with his family, she said... West began doubting the Lord. Those seemingly unanswered prayers became Satan's gateway, she asserted. Oh, yeah. Um, that, is, that is a universal. That is a universal. It, you no, are, I, I get that. Yeah, I do. I totally First understand hand. that. In a recent interview with radio personnel at Big Boy, a clearly downtrodden West admitted he has issues with Jesus and decided <coughs> he would rather take matters into his own hands than surrender to the Lord. Oh, boy, when your well, ego there supersedes. There's a lot of stuff I went through and I prayed and I ain't see Jesus showed up. West said later, adding, I'm the God of me. You can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's your job to listen. I'm the God of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already. Oh, You're not. Shh. no, boo, no. Um, this, I'm not going to go any further with this. Um, but I, I do want to look further into De La Mora's story. Not her movies, her story. Mm -hmm. So we're clear. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue with this a big part of processing in a healthy way for de la mora when she first let the porn industry herself was setting proper boundaries cutting ties with harmful people and replacing unhealthy habits with good habits mm -hmm. like devoting herself to scripture reading prayer and serving others mm -hmm. in fact the first time she tried to quit porn she was sucked right back in because she didn't distance herself from her life in the industry yeah you think you can keep those ties but you you really can't you can't 
The second time around, I learned from my mistakes, she said. So when I cut, quit the adult industry the second time, I deleted. I had hundreds of thousands of followers across social media platforms. I deleted everything because I knew that I wanted to be sold out for Christ and I could not have that temptation at my fingertips. Mm. She even got rid of her old phone and deleted her list of contacts for fear that she would be too tempted to return to the life she was so desperate to leave. Wow, she is a brave broad. While it is exhilarating to witness dramatic salvation experiences like Wes and Dillamore, as the former porn star said that as Christians, we should be careful not to place too much pressure on new believers as they are learning to navigate yeah. their newfound faith in the Lord. I think that it is dangerous to platform people when they first give their life to Christ, she said. I agree. I think if the, I think that there should be a sacred period where we just let people grow in the Lord before we share what God is doing in their lives. Yeah, and a lot of time people think that they're grifting because, oh, now yeah. you're just using God as yeah, your... Yeah, there, there is a link to and, the and, and, and Ye's, I mean, he is the kind of guy that would be using that as, as publicity. And by the way, I, I, I understand why you have issue with the term porn star, but how many... Porn co-stars have you had? Have you heard of? Or, or I don't know anybody. Or porn featuring this person over here. I, I know I know <laughs> Debbie and Bobbit. I that, I mean that that that's my that that's my my porn. It's, it's like it's like the term reality show star. Okay, it's well, Danny it has Bonaduce just as much little meaning. And, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. It's it star doesn't mean anything anymore. I guess. I guess they're using the word influencer now. I mean, so. you're the star of counterculture wise. So I, don't know. I know, but everybody knows me. Yeah, I know I because you. we get all kinds of <laughs> feedback from our ID10T form all the time. <laughs> Some really, of it's really, bad. really grown up and and mature and and no, you know, yeah, not really. Yeah, they 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 they're messing with the spirit of the ID10T form. Yeah, that's you know what, knock yourself out. Because Please. to me that says you're 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 listening. <laughs> yeah. So I'll There's take it. That. Okay, so that's why we can't have nice things because <laughs> that happens. Oh yay! I hope he doesn't really totally give up. That would make me sad. Oh yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the face of evil. <laughs> oh poor little Shiffy. Poor oh, little Shiffy Chef. <laughs> San Francisco has earned an unwelcome national reputation for car... Okay, I cannot say this word. Burglaries? Burglaries? Burglaries. Burglaries. There you go. You said it right for the first time in Burglaries. That doesn't sound like a word, though. Burglaries. It sounds like the name of an antacid. Oh, you like my you like my purse? It's a it's a it's a burglary. It's a burglary. Yeah, no, it sounds like an antacid to me. <laughs> Did you eat too many beans? Take burglaries. <laughs> It'll alleviate you of those gases. Well, in this case, it kind of did. Anyways, I took a vacation to burglary. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> that wouldn't work. <laughs> Man, I stuck my finger all the way up to the second nuggle, but I'll tell you what, I got those burglaries right out of that schnoz. Okay. <laughs> Taking it to another level dot com. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's just... Okay. Anybody want some burglary? Okay. Uh, Representative <laughs> Andam Schiff from Reigns was reminded of the hard way the Democratic congressman had his luggage swiped from his car. Golly, I wonder if it was a diversity hire. No, no, because he doesn't dress very fashionably, so it probably wasn't the uh, the bald dude that likes wearing women's clothing. Um, it was parked in a downtown garage. Who leaves their luggage in a car when you park in a downtown Shifty San Francisco? Shift. Yeah, he does. idiot. With his formal clothing gone, Schiff ended up at a fundraising dinner Thursday for his uni- U- blah, 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 U.S. Senate campaign, dressed like he was headed to a Los Angeles Dodgers game. In a shirt sleeves and insulated vest. I okay. Would somebody explain the vests to me? Okay. I used to like wearing them when I was younger. Well, I, I understand like if it's fashion, like you mm-hmm. know the vest that you wear under a suit, you mm-hmm. know under a tux. But an insulated vest. My boobs have never ever been cold while my arms were warm. That has never been a thing. I, you could do the reverse. You could give me <laughs> sleeves and leave my chest out. 
But vests are the exact opposite of what I typically need. Usually my torso is on fire and my arms are freezing. I've never understood vests, much less an insulated vest. So you're just going to let your extremities like freeze? I mean, I don't get it. Anyway. Others who attended the event were mostly decked out in suit jacket and ties. Why does it have a link here? Where does this take me? Now I'm curious where the link goes. Okay, well, we'll let that spin for a while. Uh, Schiff's campaign confirmed the burglar, burgle, burglary? Yes. Burglary. And declined further comment, citing an ongoing investigation. Yeah, right. He declined further comment because he was embarrassed. Yeah, was yes, they took my bags. He lamented, adding that he didn't want to dwell on his firsthand experience as a crime victim. Well, yeah, because, you know, you pinky-lifting elites don't get it as often as the rest of us. Statistically, reported auto break-ins are down in San Francisco, but vehicles with busted windows and sprinkles of broken glass remain a common sight in the city. Visitors and residents are constantly reminded to remove valuables from parked cars. It was advice Schiff neglected to follow. Okay, who wrote this? This is kind of... Oh, that was the AP. Didn't the AP used to just report news and not do a bunch of commentary and... Well, he did for... He did... Neglect to follow. I know. It just seems to me like that's really... It's a fact. It it just seems to me like that's really, I don't know, opinion-y. All right. Uh, Okay. I wanted to see him in his vest. I wanted to see Shiffy Schiff in his vest. Schiff, S-C-H-I-F-F, vest. I want to see his vest. This insulated vest of his. Because here's the thing. Why would you wear the vest? Uh, they're not well, showing Well, he was just it. driving. I don't know. Well, I'm just con- questioning why he would wear his vest. I mean, couldn't you just show up in your shirt? What? What? Why would you wear the vest? I don't it's get it. It's San Francisco. I don't know. I don't get it. All right, your turn. Uh, well, well, we're done? Okay. Technically, it's Max's turn, but... This uh, actually was the news of the weird and wonderful. Hmm. But I'll, I'll let you carry on, because okay. Max sent it to you. For Uh, obvious reasons. Maxi Mao. Thank you for sending this to me, bud. You're so welcome, dear father. If I may... No, you may not. Just... Mm. Some other time, Max. Got Only two hours here. (laughs) All right. Although this cat does look a lot like you. (laughs) Yes. If you were shorter haired. Shorter haired and... A Utah couple accidentally shipped their pet cat in an Amazon return package, trapping it in the box without food or water for six days. Oh, my God. The cat, named Galena, was eventually discovered safe and well in California. By the way, the photo is not of Galena. That's just for... Oh, okay. I was going to say, what? Six uh, so days should, without I water? I have said that to begin Poor with. Poor yeah, baby. The cat, the cat in the box is not the one that was... Oh, my. Six days? That's a long time. Uh, Cat Galino was eventually discovered safe and well in California. KSL-TV was the first to report. For nearly a week, Clark, along with family and friends, searched the couple's house and neighborhood, plastering missing posters around the town in hope of locating the cat. The anxiety and stress of not knowing what happened to her was excruciating, Clark told the local news outlet. (coughs) Clark then received a text notifier that Galena's microchip had been scanned per KSL-TV. Yay, microchips! Huh? I say yay microchips. Oh, yeah, my, my, yeah, microchips. Which reported that she received a call from veterinarian in California later that day. I didn't believe her at first and thought it was a prank, Clark told KSL TV. The shortest distance between Utah and California is several hundred miles. Mm. According to the news outlet, the vet told Clark the cat was found inside an Amazon return package alongside five pairs of steel-toed work boots. Who buys five pairs of steel-toed work boots? The same people boots. who wrap a cat in a box and ship it off well, to California. Well, they didn't wrap the cat. I'm sure the cat jumped in there and they just didn't catch her, but... I ran to tell my husband that Galena was found, and we broke down upon realizing that she must have jumped into an oversized box that we shipped out the previous Wednesday, Clark said. It must be for a business. They must provide yeah. them for their workers or yeah. something. More and more... I was just playing, guys. More and more of us are buying and selling things online. COVID-19 saw an increase in e-commerce with people increasingly turning to online retail instead of visiting brick-and-mortar stores. Gee, thanks, Captain Obvious. That paragraph was definitely a filler. (laughs) The The shift brought a big spike in the number of online returns in 2021, which has continued to rise, according to eMarketer. 
KSL TV reported that the cat was rescued from the box after six days without food or water oh by an Amazon employee who found her in a warehouse and took her to the vet. I can't believe she Clark she and her husband it. then flew to California to be re- reunited with her cat. The cat said, oh, go away. Yeah, be gone, humans. It was an amazing reunion. Galena instantly stopped shaking and relaxed in my arms mm-hmm. so I got to hold her again, Clark said. Despite being skinnier and some mild dehydration, her blood work was completely normal and she's completely unharmed. Not completely. You just said she was skinnier and dehydrated. That is not completely unharmed. Clark said she hopes the story inspires all pet owners to microchip their pets. Yes. And not put them in Amazon boxes. Well, there's that. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, one-third of pets will become lost at some point, like our Macamau was for 10 long (coughs) days. But those with microchips are much more likely to be reunited with their owners. A cat microchip typically costs between forty and seventy dollars. Usually, it's even cheaper because they'll include it with the spay or neuter. Yeah. Um, well, God bless the putty tat that doesn't apparently look like that, and yeah. I just made a rhyme. But Indeed you know me; you did. I do it all the time. Okay, uh, I don't want to read this one. Why not? A cosmetic process known as vampire facial is considered to be a more affordable and less invasive option than getting a face lift. But the process can be a serious health hazard if done in unsanitary conditions, according to a new report. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My face already hurts. And I <laughs> <laughs> that proved to be the case for three women who likely contracted HIV from receiving vampire facials at an unlicensed spa in New Mexico. Yeah, because that's something I want to do. Making the first known cases of the virus being transmitted during a cosmetic injection procedure. Okay, I am just going to wrinkle and grow papery and get old because ain't nobody injecting nothing. I'm just not doing it, not having it. You can't make me. I'll just be that old, wrinkly, paper thin skin, liver spotted. I'm just, just none of this nonsense. I eat. You say that yeah. now because you're none of the above. Well, yeah, I am. I got crow's feet and no teeth and spots and all kinds of stuff. I'm scary looking. But I ain't getting no damn injections. God, people. <laughs> I mean, you look at, like, Madonna and even Goldie Hawn, who, I mean, beautiful. Of course. And then ruin themselves with all these injections and surgeries and... I mean, I haven't seen any really recent pictures of Goldie, but I've seen Madonna, and she's just, truly yeah. Madonna scary. doesn't even look human anymore. And she wasn't a bad looking broad in her day. No, it's like just really age. Was, Normally, people, it's okay. I mean, look at Harrison Ford. He he looks like one of those Apple dolls now, just, and people still think he's handsome. You know, just age gracefully for he God's sake. Like that. But anyway, you know, don't don't go out Barry Manilow. Just age gracefully. Ugh. Kenny Rogers. Anyway. Oh, really? Kenny had work done? I haven't seen oh, him lately. Oh, he had lots of work done. I haven't seen him lately. You, you wouldn't because he's dead. Oh, well, there's that. Yeah. He probably looks about as good as Madonna now. Probably. Oh, yeah, Madonna might look almost as good. We'll yeah, see. almost if she's lucky. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So this would be the first. <laughs> Making the first known cases of the virus being transmitted during a cosmetic injection procedure. That just cosmetic injection procedure just... Ew, it makes my skin crawl. Oh, it's, it's going to get better. Ew, according to the findings published Thursday by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I can read the net rest of the book. No, I can hear you remember. During a vampire facial, what happens, a person's blood is drawn from their arm, and then platelets are separated out and applied to the patient's face using microneedles. So they gave themselves AIDS? Okay, I'll keep reading. The... Yeah. I'll keep reading. Go ahead, please. According to one skin clinic, excuse me. <coughs> okay. I got this. I got this. <coughs> the procedure, also called platelet-rich plasma, or PERP, is touted by proponents perp. as perp. helping perp. to reduce pore size and fine lines as well as rejuvenating the skin. You know what else does that? Steam. <laughs> But multiple people with no known risk factors for HIV were likely infected with the virus through vampire facials at the since-closed facility. Multiple people? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. 
This investigation is the first to associate HIV transmission with non-sterile cosmetic injection that's services. The whole non-sterile. That's Ew. how they got they got HIV from some schmo. Oh, sorry, me. I just dropped the needle here. Don't mind me. It's yeah, we've only got one needle, we but don't worry. We imported them from San Francisco. We, what can, yeah, what can I say? Yeah, we rinse them off. Don't worry, we rinse them off. <laughs> The facility drew the attention of state health officials after one spa client tested positive for HIV while traveling abroad in 2018. Another tested positive for HIV during routine tests for life insurance in 2018, while a third did not find out she had HIV until a year ago when hospitalized with AIDS-related illnesses. Oh, no. Oh, no. The lengths some people will go to <laughs> to be younger looking. The incidents described by the CDC indicate the risks of patronizing unlicensed spa facilities. Okay, I don't care if you're licensed. I know what you injected. Just, okay. While the CDC report didn't name the unlicensed spa, the New Mexico Department of Health in 2018 had shut down the VIP spa in Albuquerque. After state CBS will report if uh, the CCC doesn't, in yeah, other words. Well, somebody took a wrong turn. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> After state inspectors found practices that could potentially spread bloodborne infections, including HIV to clients, that included unlabeled tubes of blood on a kitchen counter. Hey, Bob, whose blood is this? Uh, I think it was uh, uh, the, the, the dude with the scalp issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one with the postules, you know as well as other injectables stored along with food in the kitchen's refrigerator. Oh! Oh, don't worry about that one. That's just gravy for the turkey later. Oh! I think that might have been a sperm donor, but don't quote me on that. Former VIP spa owner Maria Ramos de Ruiz pleaded guilty in June of 2022 to five felony counts of practicing medicine without a license. She was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Whereas the lady who's dying of AIDS, you know, she, yeah. she has a sentence too. This woman <laughs> is facing three to five. I mean, she's sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Mm -hmm. We have people who trespassed after being waved into the Capitol. <laughs> I know it's coming. Who were going to spend 25 years in prison. For trespassing. Yeah. This woman literally murdered, knowingly murdered multiple people. And she gets three and a half years in prison for practicing medicine without a license. And not only is the former president of the United States, but many people who are currently being held as political prisoners facing decades of prison time. But this woman walks away with three and a half years out after knowingly committing murder. I don't know if she realized she was committing murder, but she did know there was a risk. If you have AIDS infected blood, whether you know it's yours or somebody else's, and you get anybody within a 20 foot radius of it, you are committing murder knowingly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Those who have had the cosmetic procedure include Kim Kardashian. Again with a Kim Kardashian? God, we just can't get rid of this big-butted broad. Who posted an image of her bloody face after undergoing the process in 2013. Black. Did she really? I mean, this is, there's a link. Did she really Read post a picture? Line. I mean, did she? Ew. You actually clicked on the link. Uh, yeah. Why? Ew. But I was curious. Why? Ew. Why? Why is that a thing? And why would you post that picture, you psychotic hose beast? She no, has since come out against no the wonder, procedure. No wonder Kanye has turned to porn. Yeah. <laughs> People considering, inje well, you know, I guess it's better than, you know, fetus, you know, embryo injections. I'm sure she's done that too. People considering injections for medical or cosmetic reasons are urged to ask whether a provider clinic or spa is licensed and trained. <laughs> I mean, the place where I get my nails done has to have their licenses on the wall by law. Same place where I get my head shaven. You're telling me somebody who can take blood and stick it in your face doesn't have to have a license posted? <laughs> Seriously? 
St- some states have a lookup tool that can be used to check on licensing. You didn't, Ooh. You didn't read the whole thing. Okay. Uh, people considering injections for medical or cosmetic reasons are urged to ask whether a provider, clinic, or spa is licensed and trained, and if any products involved are FDA approved and purchased from a reliable yeah, source. Yeah, F- FDA approved, just like the 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 COVID virus and the and and. Nutrisweet. Anyway, I don't think the COVID virus was FDA. I, I think you mean the, the other things. Yeah, the, whatever. The, the, CD, the, the, CD the yakety yakety yaxi yaxi. Yeah. Uh, requiring adequate. <laughs> I, I stand corrected. I can't believe I'm reading this. Requiring adequate infection control practices at spa facilities offering cosmetic injection services. I'm sorry, but just the term cosmetic injection services. That just. But Botox is fairly cosmetic inject. I know, but you're literally putting poison. Yeah. You're, you're literally putting botulism in your face. And now you're putting HIV in your face. <sighs> in your face. <laughs> <coughs> oh, look at the next line. Yes. The CDC is separately investigating an 11 state outbreak of botulism. <laughs> Linked to counterfeit versions of Botox administered in non healthcare settings, called it. Melanie Hope, CBS News, New Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Sorry People, to make you read that. Why can't we just all grow old and ugly with grace? Come on, folks. Jim shaves his head. I, I did because I got I I was starting to look like Larry David. I just didn't <laughs> want to do it anymore. I just don't know a poofy who Larry head. David I don't want to do it. All right, so this is um, ah, I like the picture. That's not funny. something that would happen or should happen <laughs> in uh, modern society. You you think Japan always? My entire life, and this this is a broad brush I'm painting with, but they've always seemed to me to be at the forefront of technology. Uh-huh. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Okay. Yes. Not always. Walking a bunch of papers down the street on a windy day. What could go wrong? The Aichi Gesundheit Prefectural Government has issued an official apology for improper handling of the personal data of 121 resident households. The incident took place on April 19th and involved data pertaining to residents of government-assisted housing at four buildings under the jurisdiction of the Prefectural Public Housing Division. However, the data was neither leaked by an unscrupulous worker nor stolen by hackers. Instead, it was taken. We get taken by the wind. (laughs) As how how, how come (laughs) we here in the states we get hood and they get prefectural public housing division? Because I'm sure that in Japan it sounds like a uh, prefectural a public uh, okay i'm gonna get sued oh you're going to i'm gonna get sued that. i'm going straight there ain't, there ain't no hey, way Kramer gets do. away with it i, I can i can I, I can't pray enough for you to get to avoid hell now see what you do how's it a division taken by the wind instead it was taken by the wind as Take part my of my data <laughs> away boom boom <laughs> as part of the she's like the wind as part of the regular administration of the government housing program, data needed to Your be transferred. Your data, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> cool. As part of the regular administration of the government housing program, data needed to be transferred from a public corporation office to the Aichi Prefectural Government Capitol Building in Nagoya. I have no idea what the, what the distance is. Unfortunately, this data was stored on physical media, which, as we've seen before, can cause problems for Japanese government agencies. There was the time, for example, when the Tokyo Police Department lost citizens' data that they'd stored on floppy disks. Or that, that other time... That was a thing. That was a thing. Or that other time when a city employee in Hyogo Prefecture got drunk, passed out, and lost a USB memory stick with oh. residents' per- personal information on it. No. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things in Japan. The Aichi government's blunder was even more old school, however. It was carrying out its data transfer by physically transporting 1,696 pieces of paper placed inside a cardboard box. Ah, what do you bet his name was Hayakuto Abiden? Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> thinking there were similarities. Hayakuto Abiden. Um... What's more, they upped the degree of difficulty by opting to transport the box in a hand cart and having someone walk it over out on the streets to its destination 
instead of driving it over. So oh, it was definitely and, set up by a oh, bike. Oh, they decided to do this on a day with, with strong, strong winds. winds. Well, I don't think they sat there and said, I wonder what the weather's going to be today. The silent era comedy movie setup was, it seems, too much <laughs> for fate to resist. Before the public corporation employee who was pushing the cart reached the Capitol building, the cart tipped over and the box oh, opened up as it tumbled no. out. no. They didn't even they use bungee cords? They didn't even tape, the, tape or staple the or, box oh, Bungee cord. I mean, something. Come on, guys. Though the worker attempted to grab the documents, two hands aren't nearly enough to snatch 1,696 papers, and many blew away. The search for scattered documents continued until sunset, at which point the Aichi government began contacting affected residents to inform them of the data leak slash blow away. <laughs> the search continued for two more days, but without all of the documents being recovered. Hi, um, uh, this is the government. I'd just like to let you know that um, we took everything about you, your tax returns, your social, everything, and we just, I don't know, made a paper airplane out of it and tossed it into the Hudson. Okay, bye! It's like that scene in Dr. Strangelove where um, the president has to tell the Russian premier that, you know, these these this bomber was going to drop a big bomb on... <laughs> Soviet Union. Anyway, uh, Dimitri, uh, how do you think I feel, Dimitri? <laughs> that's one of my favorite movies. God, that is so funny. And uh, we have merch based on that particular movie. Uh, okay, so according to the statement from the government, the documents included the government housing residence name, the leaseholder in the case of families, and rent for the month of April. Ostensibly Why is referring- rent in quote quote marks? I don't know, honey. I didn't write the darn thing. I don't know. And rent? Why is rent well, in Cody Well, because Court? it's public assistance. Oh. It's public assisted housing. So they might, you know, the actual amount of rent would probably be different. They might not even have to pay any rent at all. It depends on what's going on. Um, ostensibly referring to written records of the amount residents paid since no mention has been made of cash being lost in the incident. That's why the quote marked. No improper use of the lost data has been discovered at this time, and in addition to issuing an apology, the Aichi Prefectural Government says it plans to switch to digital records for this part of housing administration process, which will bring them into the 21st century yeah, hello. and allow them to transfer data without any weather or cart balance concerns. Wow. Oh, my. I think I'm going to share that one on Facebook after the show's over. And, of That's- course, these articles all archived are available on counterculturewise.com, where you too can say nasty things on the ID10T form, knock yourself out. Oh, wait. Wow, this is my favorite But if you say anything actually pithy or witty or intelligent, we'll actually play it on our show. Notice we haven't played any of the comments as of late. No, no, we haven't. Cool, we get to talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep, I brought this up because you were a little miffed about this, as oh, I am. But I, I figured we, we, got, we, go, we, got, we go straight to the websites, we talk about the actual inductees, and then we talk about who's missing. So, let's see here. We've got Mary, Mary J. J. Blige. Blige. Yeah, she's that. about as rock and roll as I get in. I don't even know who she is. She's a she's an R&B singer. Some lady named Cher. Okay, I love How Cher. How has Cher not been in there all this time? I don't know. Dave Matthews Band, okay, I guess technically they're rock. I guess. I like their music, but they're not a rock band mm. in my mind. The next one. Foreigner. Foreigner, okay. How have they not been in there before? Well, same reason, reason Asia isn't in there. I don't know. Mm. Peter Frampton, okay. rock and roll. Okay, but we're talking performer category. Yeah. Okay, so this right. is performer category. Yeah. Cool and the Gang, not rock and roll. Cool Just gang not. Ozzy. Ozzy, yes. Roll. How has Ozzy not been in there before? I don't know. A tribe Called Quest. Never heard of them. Okay, now there's a musical they, excellence award. Are they, which are is they different. rappers? Who are they? I've never heard of these. A tribe guys. Called Quest. They're they're rappers. Okay, so not rock and roll. Don't yeah. don't belong in there. Okay, so musical excellence award goes to Jimmy Buffett. Also Yay. not rock and roll. Not rock. Not nah, strictly country rock. MC Five, which is as rock as it gets. I know you haven't heard of them. Mm. Just trust me on this. Norman they they at least look rock and roll. Huh? They at least look rock yeah, and roll. Yeah, they very much look rock and roll. Dionne Warwick, love her. Love her. Absolutely love her. Okay. Not rock and roll. So She's and not Norman rock and roll. Whit- Norman Whitfield, who's a, a songwriter, and he wrote a lot of hits. Musical But influence. did he write rock and roll hits? I, uh... Because okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I really don't like having... I, uh... No, and you can always Motown. He wrote Motown me. music. That is not rock and roll. That is not rock and frickin' roll. Yeah, Motown is different. And Motown has their own Hall of Fame. Okay. So, let's continue. Musical Influence Award. 
Alexis Corner, yes. British Blues Guy, yes. John Mayle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Blues Breakers, which had in its ranks from one one time or another Eric Clapton, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie. Okay, that's rock and, and roll. Uh, that's rock and, and roll. And Peter Green. So, yeah. Big Mama Thornton, the godmother of rock and roll. <coughs> she, I'll give it to her. She wrote, she wrote Hound Dog. She's in. I'll give it I'm to her. Concerned. She's in. The Ahmet Erdogan Award. Who's that? Ahmet Erdogan? Yeah. He was the uh, founder and president of Atlantic Records. Okay. Huge influence on the music in Hell industry. Hell of a name. And the winner is Suzanne DePassi, who was a executive at Motown. Okay, so this is basically the office worker of... of no, no, no. She, she was more than Hall an office worker. Hall of Fame office worker. worker? No, no, no. She was, she was a choreographer. Uh, she helped produce the music. She and, was, she and was the, a, a high-level high level executive at Motown. The, the, okay, the, not, not just some okay. schmo pushing right. pencils. Okay. The Ahmet Erdogan Award goes to uh, Jill because she brought me a latte last week. Okay, yeah. Okay, know. so... All right, so... Um, you can be see. inducted into the Hall of Fame for... Filing the taxes, honey. I don't know what the hell she did. Come on, hold on. Let me let me just find out what she did. Okay, here we go. Uh, the thing and 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 the and the thing and the thing and the thing and the. We're gonna okay, cut so out. So these the are thing the inductees. I, I want to know who the nominees okay. were. Can read I find bio it? here. Let's read the bio. Read the bio. Read the bio. E. Okay, with nearly six decades in the entertainment field, trailblazer Suzanne DePasse paved the way for women in the music business and one of the first leading female executives. From DePasse's extraordinary 20 years in Motown to her successful tenure heading to Passy Entertainment, she has used her passion, persistence, and vision to triumph in a male-dominated industry. So she's DePasse, she DePasse, and she wrote the screenplay for 1972's Billie Holiday biopic Lady Sings the Blues with Diana Ross. Her work was nominated for an Academy Award. Um, let's see. She brought the Commodores, Rick James, Tina Marie, and El DeBarge to Motown. She helped to sign the Jackson Five. Okay, so she she had influence. She okay, wasn't all right, just some, all right, all right, all right, all right. So here, look, just pimp. just hear me out. Hear okay, me out. Hear me, hear me out. out. Hear you out. Okay, the woman had a big influence. Yeah, but should the person who Put the nails in the wall. Also have an exhibit in the Louvre. Well, let me put it this way. <laughs> let me put it this should, way. Should the guy I'm trying to be who fair does here the, the because, the, the, as I said, Ahmet Erdogan Award goes to executives in the music industry. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just he was but, in, okay. he was the executive. But that's an award. She gets a plaque or something. She's not a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. Okay. Well, yeah. Either way. Okay. My question is. Mary J. Blige is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Dionne Warwick I is in the Rock and Roll the Hall of Fame. I don't know who the hell she... Mary J. Blige, matter. who is it, for, she? For intents and purposes... Hip-hop and soul. That's not rock and roll. I was it's, really trying to make the point much differently than the way okay. this is going. I'm way over here letting you make a point. <laughs> it, it don't matter Way no over here. Way I'm kinda, over here. I'm kind of done. The point is, why are they bringing in a lot of non-rock and roll people? You've got Three Dog Night, not in. Not What? Still? We've got... We, we've got Ronnie James Dio not in. RJ still still not in as a, for Dio or Rainbow or Black Sabbath because when Black Sabbath was inducted, it was just the big four. It was Geezer, Bill, Tony. Yeah, see, I'm and still Ozzy. mad about the Beastie Boys. They ain't rock and roll. Well, one that's an argument. I mean, we the Bee Gees, yeah, 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 not really rock and roll. I mean, I'm looking at I'm looking at the list here. Yeah, but the the point is, Ozzy's. I mean, uh, Dio's not in. It's not. It's Dio not real should have to been. Me. Ozzy and Dio both. Well, I mean, Sabbath was in, but you said they Sabbath went in without Dio. Yeah, Sabbath was the other. And Rainbow, other Rainbow, pe Rainbow hasn't like, been in, so hasn't no been inducted no at all. Dio at all. Oh, and no. Hetfield got to read the. Oh, I'm looking at the um, the pictures of that. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of. Deserving rock artists. I mean, I think they finally brought Jethro Tull in, I think. Well, let me see. Dylan is in. Oh, Dylan was in the first year, pretty also much. Also not rock and roll. Oh, Carly Simon. Oh, no, no, no. We got to stop. Carly stop, Simon, stop the Carol right King, here. Cat Combo. Stevens. None Combo of those, those are exist. folk. Folk. If there's a folk Hall of Fame. Are, are you are you telling me that Like a Rolling Stone was not rock and roll? Like a Rolling Stone. No, I'm asking you the question. Do you, are you saying that's not rock and roll? Yes, I am. Plus, I am he, saying plus he wrote songs 
for well, it became hits for Jimi Hendrix. Okay, all so along you're the telling me that Cheap Trick and Cher are in, but Ronnie James Dio is not. I think Cheap Trick belongs there. I mean, if you wanted, if you if you wanted to give Dylan for songwriting for actual rock and rollers, I'll I'll give that to you. Okay. But as far as his catalog goes, he's folk. Uh, you don't listen to nearly as much Dylan as I do. Mm. But okay, fair enough. Who's Dave Bartholomew? I don't know. Who's Dave Bartholomew? Well, apparently he's in the Hall of Fame and Ronnie James Dio isn't. Yeah. Dave Bartholomew. Well, let's see. Um, 1991. So um, Bill Withers. Ain't No Sunshine. When you have to say had many talents and roles... He discovered Brenda Lee is not a is not a rock and roller. He discovered Fats Domino, Lloyd Price, and seemingly uh, okay. Carly so he Simon. Discovered not a rock and roller. No, Carly Simon is not a rock and roller. Uh, no, Blondie no, no, deserved no. to be in. Bo Diddley, absolutely. Bob Dylan, yeah. Bob Marley, yeah, they're not rock and rollers. Bob Seger, yes. Well, they can be, but the thing is, in cases like Dylan or Marley, they're so influential on other rock mm. rock musicians that they belong. I there. could argue Carly Simon, Carol King, and Cat Stevens; those are all Carol folk King artists. belongs in there. You think so? I wouldn't yeah. call her rock and roll. Yeah, but she she was she wrote a lot of rock and roll songs, became okay. hits for other people. It's, Shaka Khan is in, but Dio isn't. Yeah, I know. Seriously? I know. I know. Charlie Brown yeah. is in. Oh, by the way, He's Soundgarden's not in either. Mm, they're still kind of young though, so. What do you mean they're still kind of young though? Their out first album came out in 1989. Yeah, still... And then and and that's that's a while. What I the, mean, who they're the contemporaries is... of of Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and, Who's and they're Cosimo not... Matassa. Isn't that that song from The Lion King? No, I'm not sure. How do you spell Kasim the hoo hoo? <laughs> <laughs> Cosimo, C O S I M O Matassa, M A T A S S A. Some of these people are behind the scenes. They're like, uh, <coughs> I mean, they're, they're not necessarily musicians or singers. Okay. Some of these people Bowie like, finally got in. Um, Deep yep. Purple, Le- Def Leppard is in. I mean, these they're still babies in comparison to, to Dio. Okay, Cosimo Matassa. On top of okay, Dick mind. Clark should have been the very first inductee. In fact, he should have inducted himself. He should have announced okay. his own inductment and okay. then did a top was, ten uh, of inductees. Okay. He was a studio engineer in, in New Orleans, one of the first ones to work with recording artists in New, New Orleans, including Fats Domino, Big Joe Turner, and Little Richard. Okay, okay that's rock and roll. That's, that's rock. rock and roll. He's okay, in. Dolly, I, boo, I love you. I love you with all my heart, Dolly, but you do not deserve it. She was the first to say she wasn't a rock star, and that's the only reason she released a rock album last year was to make it legit for herself. Oh, okay, you're back in, Dolly. Al- she, love you, babe. She did an album with the Beatles, for God's sake. Love you, babe. You're right. back in. Okay, you or redeemed the, the, yourself. The living Beatles, not, not the dead ones. <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. The, the Living Beatles were able to do an album with the Dead Beatles, so if you're going to do it, do it. Well, okay, uh, Donovan, borderline. Yeah, Donovan's borderline. I would borderline. call him folk. Don Cornelius is in. Good for him. I, I would call him folk, but he still slips in. Uh, Duran Duran. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. we didn't have... We didn't really have a place for new waves, so I would. I, I That's guess why could... they're including so many of them now. But like seriously, the Duran Duran and... over Dio? <laughs> I mean, really? Well, I, you know. Eagles, yes. Earth, Wind, and Fire, yes. Yes, Eddie yes. Eddie Cochran, yes. <laughs> um, yes, yes. <laughs> ELO. Well, if it weren't for ELO, we wouldn't. We wouldn't exist. be together. Um, Leo Fender definitely belongs. Yes, Eminem. No, absolutely not. First of all, he's mid as far as being a rapper. And second of all, he he's not a rocker. He's a rapper. Mm. Um, Etta James. Mm, it hurts my heart, but she's not a rocker. She's just not. Eurythmics. Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond's in. <sighs> yeah. Nope. <Mm-mm. laughs> nope. And, and, and Melanie you're... knows more than anybody I mean, I almost have a shrine to Neil Diamond. I mean, I love that guy. <laughs> you know, it's like... But he's not a rocker. Longfellow Serenade. And, and as much as I love Annie Lennox, I wouldn't say the Eurythmics are rock and roll. That's true. Pat Stonimo, yes. Fleetwood Mac, yes. Um, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters and no Ronnie J. Are you kidding me? But you can't say they're not rock. I mean, they're... <coughs> no, no. 
<laughs> they 100% deserve to be there, but so does RJ. You're looking at all these people who don't deserve to be in Parliament there. Parliament Funkadelic is in Dio is not. <laughs> George Michael, I would not consider him rock and roll. I guess, I guess, well, see, part of it, and I understand why they do this, why they bring in more influences and kind of expand the borders a little bit. Okay, but come on, Green Day. Uh huh. But not RJ. I know. What this I'm, is messed up. So yeah. somebody has something. Somebody personally, thank God, Heart Center. No, no, it's it's. Thank God, Heart Center. It's there would be Winter words. from Rolling Stone magazine. Let's call names, names. And his gang, and his gang. They, they. You know how long it took. It takes progressive bands like Genesis and Yes to be in, inducted. See, I, I can Tina. Real rock and roll. I can Tina should have been inducted. Day one. Oh yeah, definitely. Day one. Definitely. But I think that what I was trying to say before is that the reason they don't... Janet Jackson is not rock and roll. No, keep going. Just keep talking. James Taylor, not rock and roll. Jay-Z, not rock and roll. What, the reason they do this is because they're going to run out of inductees. And if they just... Not if they put in people who deserve it like RJ. But the point is, eventually... I mean, I'm not saying rock is dead. Rock will never be dead, but it's Joan point, Baez, it, really? Yeah. Really? Well, she wrote Diamonds and Rust, and Judas Priest covered it, so uh, does that count? No. <laughs> is Judas Priest even in the rock and well, roll? Well, he wrote thing? Inchworm, and Kermit covered Judy, it. Does Judy, that Judy. count? Yep, Judas Priest is in there. Okay. I wasn't sure anymore. Journey, it's about Blanken in 2017. Yeah. So they're dragging their feet on some artists because they don't like them as much. I mean, Kiss had to be voted in by fans of the band. It's just at some point, if they strict stick strictly to rock artists, they're going to be out of people to induct and it's not going to draw any attention to them. I mean, the first few years, you were rich with it. You had the Beatles, the Stones, the, the, ba- the Beach Boys and all of them. Lionel Richie. Yeah. See, I mean, I guess you and I have different ideas of what rock and roll is. From Little Richard, than... yes. Lionel Richie, no. Yeah. What, are you racist or something? Um, yeah, I'm so racist. <laughs> LL, LL Cool J, no. The Talking Heads. Lou then. Reed, yes. Louis nope. Armstrong, you know what? Borderline, but yes. Mm-hmm. If anybody had a rock and roll soul, it was Louis. Almond Brothers Band of the Animals, the band, the Beach Boys, the Beatles. Yes, all of them belong in. Madonna only because we don't really have a category for New Wave or whatever the hell yeah. she is. Slut Wave, I don't know. Slut Wave? That's I a new I don't one. Know. You've just coined a new term and in ten years it'll be <laughs> some some snot nosed journalist from the New York Times is gonna And see gonna... Michael Jackson, he deserves to be there, even though I wouldn't consider him rock and roll, but where else would you put him? You, he's, in a, it's, he's, it's in a, he's in a world it's of his pop. own. pop, yeah. And, of course, one of my all-time favorites, the Kinks. Love them. Love them. Not King Cole? No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he's not a rock and roller. Love him, love him. But Nine Inch Nails, yes. I mean, Nirvana, yes. Yeah, Nine Inch Nails, absolutely. I'm surprised Frank Sinatra isn't in here, the way they're going with the <sighs> Barry Manilow crap going on around here. Well, Barry Manilow <laughs> isn't in, but... He's not? He's. I don't. I didn't see him, is he? Yeah. Would they put him under Barry or under Manilow? No, he's not in there. Okay. I just thought that <laughs> if they're gonna if they're gonna bring bring uh, Neil Diamond See, in, Pat and Benatar, like I said, yes, he's he's the Jewish Elvis. I love me some Neil Diamond, but no. The Jewish Elvis. Oh, and I'm not I'm, the person who came up with that. And but. I'm the racist. Okay. <laughs> he calls himself that for Pete's sake. Phil Spector, yes. Prince. Well, I mean, we don't have anywhere else to put him, so yes, Pink Floyd, he could absolutely. Rock out. Oh yeah, Prince! Dang, that man could play guitar. Holy yeah, moly! He's one of the best guitar players. Queen, ever. yes. Quincy Jones, yes. Ariane, yes. Yeah. Radiohead, yes. Rage Against the Machine. Uh, you mean Rage and Fear? So I was, I was, I was, I was blasting the Ramones. Yes, the one I love from Randy Ariane. Rhodes. He got his own special. Ah, musical excellence. Yeah. Yay! You know what this means? Randy Rhodes got in before Ozzy did as a solo artist. Isn't that funny? It's. <laughs> Bittersweet. And you know what? I bet you Ozzy actually appreciates that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean he, he was he's just been a... in... He was, he was inducted as for Black Sabbath a couple of years ago. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, Ringo Soundgarden's Star, not in. Richie Valens. Um, Asia is in. Roy Orbison, in. yes. Rush, yes. There's, there's too many... Who the hell are Sam and Dave? 
Oh, wait, wait. No, you got to be kidding what? me. What? No. Okay. You remember the, the that song the Blues Brothers came out with called Soul Man? Yeah. Yeah. That was them? Sam and Dave were the, were the real Blues oh, Brothers. Oh, I thought that was made especially for that movie. No. They okay. Did that yeah. song. Sam Hold and Dave are in. I'm, I'm educating in. you after this show is Thank over. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get educated. I'm going to pull out the greatest hits and force you to listen. So My man's going to educate me after the show. <laughs> Wait, no, we have an interview after the show. <laughs> anyway, we'll, just, uh, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll take care of it. Billy so Billy anyway, I didn't mean holiday, to go yes. on for 40 minutes over this. Well, no, it's no, just... this is this is fascinating who gets in and who doesn't and why it skips around so much. Yeah. Uh, Eminem absolutely does not deserve to be in there at all. Not, I mean, just not even remotely. You, he's don't, not... you don't think he's... He... You he's don't think he deserves it? he's mid as far as a rapper. He's a despicable human being, and he's not a rock and roller. Yeah. So I mean, he doesn't even deserve to be in the rapper Hall of Fame, but definitely not the rock and roll Hall of Fame. When has he ever done anything even remotely related to rock and roll? See, and and that was my argument for <clears throat> in favor of the Beastie Boys because <clears throat> you've got to fight for your right to party. I mean, that's an all that's not rock, rock and song. no, it's not. It isn't. No. It's a bunch of and bass. It's and, a bunch of fat boys yelling into a camera. There's no music. They don't play any I, instruments. Yeah, Do they even write the song? Be, that that is always going to be a disagreement with you. Do they even write the song? I mean, yes, they write all of their music. All of it. But they don't have music. They just yell. No, 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 no. They, you, you, I've heard more of their music than yeah, you have. Just yeah. trust me on it. Just trust me on it and, and roll. Do any of them have the ability to sing at all? Do any of them have the ability to sing? Yes. Do they? Yes. All right. See, even Whitney Houston, as much as I love her, not rock and roll. Not rock and roll Not rock and roll. Willie Nelson, not rock and roll. Not rock and roll. Woody Guthrie, love me some Woody. Not rock and roll. <laughs> okay, well, I've had enough of these fake inductees, so let's head on into <laughs> <laughs> the new oh, normal. This is not Bubble Waters. It is no longer 2020. But this is your new abnormal. I can do things other people can't. And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him in uh, foot, foot. And I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. Ambrose uh, Bozzi, they call him Bozzi, Michael Bozzi. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came in. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in... New Guinea, and uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. What a stupid son of a bitch. She's in the all. I'm the only white boy within 20 miles. Our leader, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> our fearless 80, leader. Eighty-one he's million votes. Because he doesn't even know any, doesn't know what he's doing. Eighty-one million. I'd be fearless votes. too if I were that ignorant. <laughs> I'm telling you, that'd be like real, real. I'd, I'd be. Yeah, he's power. as fearless as his voters. It's, it's like his his secret weapon, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> secret power. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, enough about him being an idiot. Let's talk about other foreign leaders being an idiot. <laughs> all righty. All right, I'm buying this one. I'm buying this one. 
Mexico City. Mexico's president said Thursday that the country's violent criminal gangs and drug cartels are essentially respectful people who respect the citizenry and mostly just kill each other. Or kill each other. It doesn't have that stress. Okay, mostly just kill <laughs> each other. <laughs> I put the emphasis on the wrong syllables. Well, there you, there you go. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> The claims by President André Manuel López Obrador are clearly at odds with the reality of millions of Mexicans who live in areas dominated by drug cartels. The cartels routinely demand protection payments from local residents and kill or kidnap them if they refuse to pay. A reporter asked López Obrador whether drug cartels behaved well when he visited the township of Badrigayato? Badira Guato. Oh, you make it sound so much sexier. Badira Guato. Badira Guato. Badira Guato. Which means what? Bad fat cat or something? Probably. We'll <laughs> leave it alone. Sinola. Home of imprisoned drug lord Joaquin El Chapo. El Chapo still alive? Yeah. I thought he died a long time ago. Guzman. Mm-hmm. Which he has controversially visited as president about half a dozen times. Yeah, why does he visit him? Always, Lopez Obrador responded, adding that was some... quick to respond. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's... Yeah, uh, yeah, always, uh, yeah, nice yeah. People. Sometimes we come upon people who are strange, but respectful. They have this really strange way of showing their respect, like putting a gun to my head and telling me to say what they tell me. <laughs> Continuing on the subject of drug cartels... At his morning news briefing, Lopez Obrador said there is something people should know. Fortunately, the attacks that happen in this country generally occur between criminal groups. The president said they respect the citizenry. Gosh, that sounds like Biden talking about Chicago. Well, now, 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 um... That toddle in town. They only, they only kill each other. Oh, wait, wait. No, I think it was um, a bummer that was like, now, now, let's not get all wee-weed up. You know, all these gangs, are, they're just shooting each other now. That could have been my son. Yeah, shut up. Lopez Obrador has long refused to directly confront the cartels who he claims were forced into criminality by a lack of opportunities. There, there, I mean, there is a, a small yeah. argument that can be made for that, but come on now. Yeah, right. Ultimately, you are responsible for His it. hugs, not bullets strategy offers job trading programs for youth so they won't become gun- cartel gunmen. How's that working out for you there, Labrador? How's that working for you? (laughs) In the past, he has also appeared to normalize the gang's presence, encouraging Mexicans to negotiate peace packs among the cartels. He's bought and sold. Oh, so much. So very much. Well, I mean, you see how many people he's moving through our border. He's probably just glad to be rid of them. (laughs) By saying the cartels don't attack common citizens takes the issue to a new level. Experts and rights activists say thousands of Mexicans have been forced from their homes by cartel violence and extortion, and thousands of business owners, taxi, and bus drivers have been killed for refusing extortion demands. Clandestine grave sites throughout Mexico are filled with the bodies of drug cartel victims, as are many here in the States, because they're just sending the drugs right up here. Thursday's statements by Lopez Obrador come one week after he said he won't fight Mexican drug cartels on U.S. orders. And what the president called a Mexico first policy. (laughs) This would so not be happening if we had a real president. He said, we are not going to act as policemen for any foreign government. Mexico first, our home comes first. So we're going to send all our criminals to you because you have a weak diaper-filling president who just opened the borders wide so we can send all of our criminals and traffickers and drug cartels and anybody we so desire to get rid of. And you know what? Mexico will be a much better place for it. So you're going to have to start illegally crossing the border to come here in order to live in peace. End quote. (laughs) Over the years, Labrador has laid out various (laughs) justifications for his policy of avoiding clashes with the cartels. In the past, he has said, you cannot fight violence with violence. Yes, you can. You just got to bring on more violence. (laughs) 
When it comes to that kind of thing, I know it sounds crazy, mm -hmm. but it's true. If they're dead, mm -hmm. they can't kill you. And on other occasions, isn't that what war is? And on other occasions, he has yeah. argued the government has to address the causes of drug cartel violence, ascribing them to poverty or lack of opportunities. I'm going to interrupt just for a moment and say, okay, yeah, a lot of gangs, it, not just in Mexico, but here and other places, they form in situations where there's poverty or a lack of opportunities. However, that shouldn't... I mean, he seems to be giving them a, a go-ahead. It's mm. all right. What, what happened to you 45 years ago is okay. It, just... it seems to me that gangs can only exist when they have a plentiful amount of opportunity. Mm -hmm. hmm. It seems to me that if they had no opportunity, the gangs could not exist. But since you are affording them such opportunity that they can get away with their crimes... That's the reason you have gang crime. So perhaps if you gave them different opportunities and did not give them criminal opportunities, you could change things. Instead, you're like, oh, oh, these poor little, oh, they're just allowed in stealing bread for their hungry family. Oh, yeah, shut up. What else Labrador do? Labrador has also encouraged leaders of the Catholic Church to try to negotiate peace pacts between warring gangs. That's not the... That's not the church's place. <sighs> Whatever. So let me introduce you to the concept of holy water, <laughs> otherwise known as an AR with hollow points. <laughs> Uh, Let's make that water holy, shall we? Yes, indeed. Explaining why he has ordered the army not to attack cartel gunmen, he said in 2022 that, quote, we also take care of the lives of the gang members. They are human beings. Have you seen these gang members? Apparently he has, yes. They've walked up to him and said, don't do it, and whatever. Yeah. He has also sometimes appeared not to take the violence issue seriously. Sometimes appeared? <laughs> anyway. In June 2023, he said of one drug gang that had abducted 14 police officers. Let me read that again. They had abducted 14 police officers. He said, quote, I'm going to tell on you to your fathers and grandfathers suggesting that they should get a good spanking. Um, okay. Asked about... Why does he sound so much like Biden? It's almost creepy how much he sounds like Biden. Asked about those comments at the time, residents of one town in the western Mexico state of... Michoacan. Say it again? Michoacan who have lived under drug cartel control for years and reacted with disgust and disbelief. He's making fun of us. Well, I wanted you to do it in Speedy's voice. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. He's making fun of us, said one <laughs> resident owner, who asked to remain I'll, I'll anonymous because he... I'm not going to do it for a human being. Okay. All right. So if okay. next time Labrador has a, a quote, okay. okay. He's right. making fun or... Well, actually, I, that voice is, is reserved for Beto. Mm-hmm. He's making fun of us, said one restaurant owner who asked to remain anonymous because he, like almost everyone else in town, has long been forced to pay protection money to the local cartel. Okay, you just outed him by saying he's a restaurant owner. You should have said business owner or just... <sighs> it's the, it's an entire state in the country of Mexico. No, but he's talking one restaurant in this... Owner. It's, you know. Town. It's a town. Okay. Right. Labrador has also made a point of visiting the township of... Badira Guato in Sinaloa State. You just made that up half a dozen times and pledged pledging to do so again before he leaves office in September. Couldn't happen soon enough. Yeah. It's also a stance. Do they vote somebody else in? Yeah, it's a president. They're going to vote somebody else in. But they haven't yet. No, the election hasn't happened yet. So does he have to get out or are you only allowed to serve so many terms think, in Mexico? I think there's term limits, but I don't know. I don't okay. live there. I don't have any idea and don't care. It's also a stance right, related right. to prickly nationalism and independence. Asked in November why he has visited the sparsely populated rural township so many times, Labrador quoted a line from a defiant old drinking song, Because I Want To. Oh, he's a peach. Yeah. 
The president has also imposed strict limits on U.S. agents operating in Mexico and limited how much contact Mexican law enforcement can have with them. Of course he has. Because. Because, I mean, China can't Because he get, might as well be a gang member himself. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You and look he probably at, is. You look at how much fentanyl is making it across the border, and it's like we're not fighting it. They're not fighting it. They're in on it. Yeah. This is part of their business plan. Speaking of the diaper filler in chief. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Di- diaper filler in chief. Um, for some reason, I skipped to the last article. Let's do this. <laughs> now, a lot of you have seen this video, but I just had to bring this one up because this just underscores how badly we need this guy to be to gone. Play, do you want me to play this video? See no, it's okay. I don't find it and play it. Biden's week of gaffes continued Wednesday with an embarrassing teleprompter reading. At a trade union conference in Washington, D.C., Biden, reading off a teleprompter, appeared to incorporate strict script instructions in the middle of his speech. It's resulting... not the first time he's done this, though. No, no. Repeat the line. Yeah. Imagine what we could do next. Four more years. Pause. He said before laughing as the and audience And then they had to hold up the sign to get years. them because everybody else is like, Fort Wood did. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is where we're supposed to chant. Biden's pause moment quickly led to online reactions ranging from outright mockery to concern. We're going to mock. Just now? We're just now getting around to concern and mockery? I'm Ron Burgundy, <clears throat> Fox News contributor Guy Benson joke, referencing the main character of the movie Anchorman's habit of reading anything exactly how it's written on the teleprompter. <laughs> Outkick founder Clay Travis agreed. Joe Biden read the instruction pause on the teleprompter. The guy is Ron Burgundy. He just keeps getting worse. Well, at least he can still read. I wouldn't even give him that much credit. The best part about this isn't that Biden pulled a Ron Burgundy and read pause from the teleprompter. It's that it took him a solid six to seven seconds of confused silence to even understand what was <laughs> happening. Outstanding outkick writer Ian Miller added. Too, too true. This man is not mentally fit to be president, he, Indiana Republican representative Jim Banks said. He wasn't Jim back Banks in the said. 80s. He's never been mentally fit to tie his shoes. Good grief, actor Matthew Marsden exclaimed. Fox News contributor Steve Cortez explained Biden's teleprompter blunders would be funny if he weren't president. Mm -hmm. Here he reads the pause instruction. Such directions are clearly differentiated on his screen, usually with multiple parentheses, telling the speaker, don't say this part. Hello. Red State columnist Buzz Patterson remarked, oh, we're going to pause this four more years. This is sad. Pause and frown. (laughs) Former (laughs) Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee wrote. (laughs) Biden has made multiple gaffes and verbal mishaps within the last week. Just one day prior, the president was mocked for inadvertently claiming that he couldn't be trusted over former President Trump. Well, at least he told the truth for once. I don't know why we're surprised by Trump. How many times does he have to prove we can't be trusted, Biden said. (laughs) On Monday, Biden was attacked for equivocating on the ongoing anti-Israel protests taking place on college campuses nationwide. I condemn the anti-Semitic protests. That's why I have set up a program to deal with that. I also condemn those who don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians, Biden Biden told reporters. Mm -hmm. Uh, What? Last Thursday, Biden made a confusing statement urging people to choose freedom over democracy. Yep. Are you ready to choose unity over division, dignity over demolition, truth over lies? Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because Because that's America, Biden said. Biden almost repeated that same gaffe Wednesday, but appeared to catch himself. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Uh, uh, for democracy, Biden said before the audience applauded <laughs> because they're a bunch of trained seals. Our <laughs> <laughs> RNC <laughs> research account, <laughs> the official White House transcript did not include the word Biden saying the word pause at Wednesday's yeah, event. It just says inaudible. Of course inaudible. it did. Yeah, they cover up for him yeah. all the time. Speaking of which... Yes. We have a tale of modern horror. We haven't had one of these in a long time. Now, I am in the process of animating this, but I think it deserves a listen, even if you don't get to see. This is a good time for it, yes. Yeah. Gather round, boys and ghouls, for another... Tale of Modern Horror! <laughs> Our story begins in a closed door emergency meeting of the DNC, where all the big players are brainstorming new ways to stop Teflon Dawn! <laughs>
All right, everyone, settle down. All right. Thank you all for meeting today. As you know, none of the Soros lawfare has worked to stop Donald Trump from being on the ballot this fall. We worked too hard to get Joe in, and we can't let the voters actually decide for themselves, or we'd have to actually become a viable government. We're running out of time. We've got to figure out how to disqualify him, or his voters might just sneak another one past us. Uh, Mr. President, you said you had an idea. I was going to put him in uh, foot, uh, Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, this legislative package strengthens our law enforcement case. Yeah. <laughs> That's an astute observation, sir. Ah, look at the bunny. See the bunny? His hair smells like strawberries. Nazi fags. There you go. Take Mr. Bunny over there, sir. Good president. Good boy. I'm the only white boy within 20 miles. Good boy. Okay, back to the discussion. The Supreme Court wickedly upheld the Constitution even after all the subtle threats we sent to their families. If they won't allow the states to dictate who the people are allowed to vote for, how do we circumvent that? I say we just off the effort. Who let Nancy get into the vodka again? It's water. I'm a teetotaler. Sure, Nancy. Okay, as much as we'd like to, we can't kill him. He would just become a martyr and it would make everything infinitely worse. Now that he's got a mug shot and sweet kicks, we would be facing another George Floyd scenario, and we need those guys to vote for us like they're told to. We've got to do this on the down low so his followers won't revolt. Boating accident? What did I just say? Plane crash? Snake bite? Poisoned Diet Coke? Those are all just ways of killing him. Mitch, turn off Nancy's mic. Hey, you got it. I'll say you got it, boss. Guillotine. Okay, like, no one, like, actually, like, likes him. Roller so why don't we just call him a bunch of names and stuff so they, like, will just not, like, you know, want to vote for him anymore. Take full of radish. Yes, we can keep hammering how racist he is and that he actually said he won't genocide the Jews. Can you believe that Nazi scum? That hasn't been working for years now. People are starting to see him as human again. Even with the press fully on our side, some Democrats are starting to defect. We've got to do something so drastic that there is absolutely, positively no way Trump can ever be president again. Scorpions in his bed. Uh, permission to address the chair? Push him off a cliff. Well, we usually don't let interns speak, but we're desperate, so what have you got? So let's say that we let him win. <laughs> Firing squad. Seriously? That's literally the opposite of what we're trying to do. Strapped to a log in a shop. I know, I know. That's the genius of this plan. Seriously, walk with me on this one. I think it might tracks. work. Okay, so while all of the election stuff is going on, we very publicly and very transparently launch an exhaustive investigation into the 2020 election. You know, that investigation we'd never done because it was just too easy to say that anyone who doubted us is an insurrectionist. Yeah, no one is buying that anymore. Right. Well, let's just tell them the truth. Oh, no, 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 no. Overdose him on ivermectin. What are you saying? Are you insane? No, hear me out. We let Trump stay on the ballot. He wins. Two or three days before he's inaugurated, we release the full report in a hugely public way. Globally. That's stupid. He'd, like, have won and everything. And then everyone would, like, know, like, what we did on top of it and stuff. That's How stupid. about those lasers that we used in Maui? No, it's brilliant. I see exactly what you're saying. It would work. Guys, this would work. I, I don't, don't get, get it. it. It's time to the rack. My husband's got one in the bedroom. Okay, let me explain. We can all act surprised when our investigation concludes with finding that Trump did, in fact, win in 2020. All the mail-in ballots and machine debauchery that we've been saying was a conspiracy theory can just be admitted to. We can say that uh, there was a big CIA cover-up, yeah, 
We can throw them under the bus. They don't care because they ain't going anywhere. Right. Then we make a big deal about apologizing to him and his followers. We reinstall him as the rightful sitting president for the final one to two days, which immediately disqualifies him from winning in 2024 because Because a a president president can can only serve serve two two terms. terms. My God, this is better than killing him. Says you. Well, it looks like Teflon Don will live to fry another day. (laughs) Tune in next time for another tale of modern horror. McDonald's french fries will probably take them out. We had a little bit of fun with that one. <laughs> Almost too much fun. I, I wrote that a month ago. I've been meaning forever to, to do this, but was, I, I, I still think it's timely. I'm going to pat my wife on the back. She was funny on that one. Yeah. That was real good, real good <laughs> writing. It just came there. to me like, I got to write this, and I literally just sat down and wrote the whole thing, and it's like, um, I think this might be a called it we'll we'll see we'll yeah. see we'll see how it goes i hope not <laughs> well i uh, frankly i think they're gonna find a way to assassinate him and, and blame trump supporters uh because they got they have to take out and mark my words and i know this will get us booted off of youtube i don't care they have to take out biden they cannot let him continue i mean he's he's too big of a disgrace but they also can't ask him to he's step a, he's down. He's a security risk. Right. And has been since day one. But they they can't let him step down because Kamala's worse. Mm-hmm. And they can't have her step down because she checks all the bigot boxes. And, and you know, it, it, you, they want to get rid of her. There, there's, there's paperwork and witnesses and everything. People want to get rid of her. She's awful. But they can't because she checks all the bigot boxes. And, and if they were to get rid of the first... "Quote unquote black woman," she's not black, by the way. Um, you know that that would be the end of the. You know that. Well, okay, the Democrats don't care. They're they're such. Anyway, uh, so they're stuck. They are stuck because either they completely replace him, which they can't do because they have to double down on all their shenanigans. Or they're going to have to admit, okay, we're stuck with Kamala now. And, I mean, who can imagine a fate worse than that? (laughs) I mean, good Lord. Having that hyena in charge of the country, I mean, the only thing she's good at is sleeping her way into her position. Which position was that? Well, probably doggy style by the looks of her. And, I mean, I'm sure Putin would be down with that. But... (sighs) I'm that sure. was a decidedly non-Christian thing to say. <laughs> I apologize. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying yeah, to Rev. Better, folks. Yeah, Reverend, you're supposed to be the 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 example. The, the I'm household. trying to be. I yeah, just, you, know. you and your okay. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So uh, stay tuned for the animated version of that. Let's talk about this poor child. This. This breaks my heart. And this well, is more than this awful. is why we can't have... Well, I guess this is the new normal. I Oh, I pray to God that this is not the new normal. This is awful. Yeah. Fractured bones, a knocked out tooth, deep bruises, and immeasurable heartache. Now, I will not be playing this video. No, please don't. Those are just some of the injuries suffered by at least three students with autism, allegedly at the hands of a Littleton Public Schools prayer professional trusted to care for them. Wait, this is the... This is the... The bus driver. The Not other kids, okay, because I just saw a video of other kids doing this. This is an adult, this is a grown... Backing off the mic. Don't want to swear. The kids take a dedicated bus provided by the LPS transportation system to go to one of Colorado's most highly regarded private schools for children for students with autism, the Joshua School. Yet, as some parents discovered and told CBS News Colorado, that bus was a place of torture. They took my trust and spit on it, said Devin, the father of 10-year-old Dax, in a press conference, fighting back tears as he described what happened to his son. The families asked for their last names not to be shared, but Dax's parents did want the video of their son to be made public, 
without blurring or redaction. Dax is nonverbal. So Ballsy. His, so his facial reactions and body language are what speak for him, his parents said. It was a heavy decision to make to uncover it, but we cannot bring attention to this if we don't look at it, said Dax's mother, Jess. Just like the uh, uh, the lady running for president on the Democratic uh, side. The, the yeah, time. earlier, yeah. It's ugly to look at, but it's important to see how confused and afraid he was in that video. It just speaks to his vulnerability and speaks to the terror he had to endure while on that bus. That video was shared Tuesday morning, showing Dax aboard the LPS bus sitting next to paraprofessional Kara Jones. It was... Recorded March 18th and captures Jones, 28, physically abusing the 10-year-old boy, repeatedly elbowing him in the stomach, slapping his face, and stomping on his feet. And ladies and gentlemen, we are about to reveal the face of this person. Uh, How could someone used that I trusted, Cody, Cody someone, marks. Yeah. How could someone I that I Look trusted, at that. She has no remorse. There is, those are dead, dead eyes. How could someone that I trusted, someone I was so friendly, do this to my little boy, Jess said tearfully. The torture and torment of my sweet boy could have been stopped. Jess said she noticed strange bumps and bruises on her son months ago, dating back to September 23. She brought her concerns to staff at the Joshua School, who confirmed with her Dax did not suffer those injuries while in their care. Jess said she then brought her concerns to LPS, but they told her there was nothing to be concerned about. Here, have a slice of apple pie. Go home. Then Jess said her son's injuries became worse and she demanded answers from the district. I notified LPS on March 18th and on March 19th got a phone call from Littleton Police informing me that an LPS employee had severely abused my child. Oh, golly, gee Willikers, how nice of you to let us know. I went to the LPS transportation building and was in utter shock. The video made her sick, she said, and that stomach turning intensified when police said other children were also abused, allegedly at the hands of Jones as well. My son doesn't have the ability to tell me when someone is hurting him, said another child's father. My son doesn't have the ability to tell me that he was forced to watch someone hurt his friends. Now the parents of three young students are prepared to sue the school district. They say LPS knew about their abuse concerns for months and seemingly turned a blind eye. Golly, I wonder why, considering who did the abusing and who was abused. I'm not saying a word. You just did. They had everything they needed to stop it faster, and they didn't, said attorney Ed C. Hopkins of the Rathod Muhammad Bai Law Firm. They had notice, and they ignored it. These children have been traumatized and tortured because they failed them. A failure, Jess said, is blatantly obvious in the alarming video she wants the world to see. Maybe Although I should hard play it watch, if she wants people to see it. Yeah. Although it's hard to watch, that's what my child was has endured for months due to inaction by Littleton Public Schools, she said. He had to live through that every day. The least we can do is bring awareness to a situation that's unfortunately more common than you would think. There needs to be change. I mean, I understand, you know, I've taken care of autistic kids, and Mm -hmm. it is tough because you forget they don't have the capability to understand what's going on. They don't have the ability to explain themselves. You know, they just react. and, And if you think of them as just... Like everybody else, you start thinking, okay, they have sinister ideas or whatever. It's like a dog. It's like, yeah. you know, the dog doesn't have the ability to tell you. Mm-hmm. And, and the dog can only react in the way a dog can react. And I'm, please, please, please understand. I am We're not, not comparing, comparing children, to children to dogs. I'm no, not doing not that. Doing but that. what I'm saying is the mentality is very similar. It's like they can only function and think the way they can. And you have to constantly remind yourself. I mean, I had to go through that with my mother when, you know, her tumor Mm -hmm. was pressing on areas of her brain that that disabled her ability to communicate. And, you know, I knew her as a person who was very capable of communicating. I mean, brilliant woman. And now all of a sudden I've got like this childlike person that there were times where it's like, okay, I can't deal with this. I can't handle this because she's just being manipulative and, and emotional and, and, you know, childlike. And it's like, no, 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 that's not her. That's not mm-hmm. what's happening. That's the best she can do with what she's got. Right. And you that's, have that's got right. to be the adult in the room. You have right. got to be the person who can look at them with understanding and concern and be able to calm your yourself down. And and if you are unable to do that, if you cannot leave the situation and calm your own ass down, you cannot be in the you presence. You, you can't get their level. Because you you the, cannot yeah. be in the presence of these people. It takes a very, I am not one of these. It takes a very special, unique person. We have a friend, a, a, God bless her if she ever listens to this. 
uh, Sandra, we have a friend who has that capability. She is the most caring, kind, calm person. And I know it takes a toll on her. I know Mm -hmm. that. In the moment, she is able to be the cool head in the room. She's able to be the adult in the room. And that's what these children need. They can't control this. You know, I mean, they... But to, to, to react in a violence, that is the lowest form. I yeah. mean, there, you can't get any lower than she's, that. She's, she's not fit to be out in public. LPS declined multiple requests for an interview, but did share a letter a district spokesperson said the superintendent mailed to LPS parents on April 5th. It states an internal vest- investigation began March 19th. Jones was fired and police were notified. Um... This kind of behavior cannot be and is not tolerated, the letter reads. But it has been. As parents, you trust us with the well-being of your children, and you should never have to worry about them being harmed when they are in our care. No, you should not. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. The letter also claims Jones was hired in August 2023 after satisfactory reference checks and after passing through a background check. Try harder, people. Jones was arrested on April 4th after the incident was reported to the Englewood Police Department by Littleton Police on March 28th. She was <coughs> released from the Arapahoe County Jail on a $5,000 bond on April 5th. Okay, Ginger has to jump in again. So she's so abusing ginger, yeah. children, mm-hmm. abusing disabled children, and she goes boingy boingy right out of jail on a five thousand dollar bomb. Five thousand dollars is nothing, by the way. Meanwhile, people who were led into a building are still rotting in prison under misdemeanor charges. Jones is scheduled for a preliminary hearing in Arapahoe County Court on May third at one thirty p.m. on charges of crimes against at-risk juvenile third degree assault and crimes against at-risk juvenile Third injury. degree assault yep. versus trespassing. She's mm. free. For the moment. <clears throat> She'll walk. Have you seen her? She's hideous. These, these, these are the parents of the kids that she abused. Mm-hmm. This is the person who did I, the abusing. I, I really pray that you're wrong. I, I genuinely pray. I that you're pray. Wrong. Those are some dead eyes too. That is one. Yeah, she's her soul. Her one, soul disappeared that is a while one ago. Soulless person, but no, nope, she'll walk. Yeah. She'll walk. Okay. Well, I don't know about you. <laughs> I, could, I could use some cheering up. So let's do some Florida. Guy. <laughs> let's do let's some, some Florida dude. Let's do some Florida man. It's pretty sad when you have to use Florida man to cheer yourself up. So stupid, lacking a brain. Well, here's a guy who'll make you feel like a genius and maybe even sane. All the world loves to laugh at losers as often as they can. Here comes another chance to chuckle. Here comes the Florida man. Gotta love our, that Florida man. <laughs> the Florida man theme with me singing a flat note. There we go. And, our, and it ain't Florida if you don't have an alligator wrestler, but this one happens to be an MMA fighter. All right. So too bad. Uh, let's see. Martial. What is it? Mixed martial Mi- alligators. Mi- mixed martial alligators. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so he uses his bare hands to catch and carry away an eight-foot alligator wandering Jacksonville streets. And we have the video, ladies and gentlemen. Right. We have the video. Okay, first of all, kudos for doing it barefooted. 
That's kind of he, badass. I guess he does this for a living. He's, he's he do, he knows how to alligator wrestle. He well, yeah, it looked like he really knew what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, he, he got on top of it. He closed the mouth. He was able to wrap it, and then he picked it up. I mean, yeah, he looked like he knew. So. I didn't know that MMA involved alligators, but the guy really looks like he knows what he's doing. It says the alligator was irate. The alligator was like, dude, what, what what's happening, man? Yeah. Yeah. He's not irate. He's just going to, that's built into an alligator. That that's programmed into his little gator brain. Okay, so 8 foot alligator sounds really scary, but when you consider how big the tail is, he's kind of a little itty bitty alligator. He's a little uh, gator. you know, I don't care how little bitty. I'm I mean, he's big enough to eat our dog, but All right. So, Florida MMA fighter used his bare hands to subdue an 8 foot alligator that was crawling along the streets of Jacksonville's north side on Sunday night. Mike Dragic, 34, known as the Blue Collar Brawler, was at a nearby hockey game with his family when he received a nuisance alligator call from the sheriff's department. Yeah, so he must be a pro if he's getting the... Mm-hmm. I love that he's barefoot, though. That That's sexy as hell. A licensed alligator trapper and military veteran. Okay, he just went all the way up to 10.5 10 on, on, on the... level. He's actually about he's, 7 or 8 on mine. He, so he's exploded yeah. the thermometer on, yeah, the, on yeah. the hotness level. Mm-hmm. Dragic didn't have his trapping equipment with him at the game, but he responded to the call anyway, driving to a local shopping plaza where he saw the snarling creature. Snarl, <laughs> snarl, I say, snarl. <laughs> well, alligator is the coolest alligator in the swamp. <laughs> same thing as Snagglepuss. I mean, literally the exact same. Am I crazy? Or it was Wally Gator literally Snagglepuss? More or less the same character, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was same he, voice actor. Anyway, uh, I was going to say, sure. was it the same voice actor? Okay. Yeah. You, w- you would know. Yeah. Using his bare hands and feet, <laughs> Dragic pinned the big alligator down and was able to capture it without any equipment. Rawr. Yeah, he is a sexy beast. A video taken at the scene shows the alligator lumbering across the road while the trapper walks behind it in pursuit. Dragic could be seen stalking up behind the alligator before pouncing on its back and pressing down its neck. The irate alligator's jaws popped open and it appeared to hiss. <laughs> the veteran pressed the alligator's head down, applying great force until the creature's snout was flat on the ground. My understanding is that all of their force is in snapping closed. So mm-hmm. if you can get the mouth closed, you can keep it closed just by pinching them. Right. Now, uh, that could be a wise tale, but I'll look it up. The veteran then pressed the alligator's head down, applying great force until the creature's snout was flat on the ground. Pulling the alligator's jaws up, Dragic deftly wrapped its mouth shut with a special tape. Quack. After subduing the eight-foot giant, the blue-collar brawler hoisted the alligator and marched down the highway with the thrashing creature in his arms. Spectators could be seen crowding the streets to get a glance at the local hero. Many bystanders had their phones out and were recording the entire spectacle. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office called the emergency alligator situation to FWC, and I was dispatched. It was only five minutes from the game, so I literally left the game, caught the alligator, and went back to the game. (laughs) I wonder if he was barefoot at the game, because that's badass, too. All right, so here we are being released. April is the start of mating season for alligators, so similar incidents abound over the course of the month. Dragic has earned a reputation for his daring alligator removals, amassing tens of thousands of followers online. Last June, the veteran and MMA fighter was dispatched to remove an aggressive 10-foot gator from a parking lot near Jacksonville Elementary School. Relying on his bare hands again, Dragic grappled the giant reptile in front of a crowd of cheering spectators. I felt like Batman, for real, you know. We got there, we walked through the gate, and boom, there it was, just ready to go, right there in the parking lot, and we just had to get the job done. In the video from the incident, the giant alligator snaps at Dragic as he tries to grab it by the tail. Dressed in a muscle shirt, he can be seen trying to pin it down using a catch pole as they battle it out on the grass in front of the screaming onlookers. The local veteran put the loop at the end of the pole around the alligator's neck. The animal can be seen rolling around in circles, desperate to shake off his opponent. That's what they do, they roll. Mm -hmm. Um, with the catch pole still around the alligator's neck, Dragic jumps on the animal's shoulders and, and in the middle, 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 I put extra syllables in there, and sits to hold it down, accompanied by several Jacksonville firefighters. Okay, if there's this sexy beast and firefighters involved, I've got to watch that video. 
A lot of firefighters will understand that when you go to the cage, you're nervous, but once that cage door closes, you got to be focused and honestly, uh, honestly, honestly, that's what I remember from that night. Dragic has made the most of his fame by directing people's attention to Project Savior Outdoors, a nonprofit he founded that offers retreats for military veterans to help prevent suicide. We need to learn more about this guy. He sounds like a hero to me. He sounds like a hero, like in every aspect. Yeah. Plus, he's barefoot. According to the nonprofit's mission statement, their aim is to fight PTSD and veteran suicide through the outdoors. If that is the place that you can find God and peace, that is where you will find it. He's doing God's work. Our so. prayer is that all veterans will forge community, ignite purpose, and defy darkness. Well, God bless this Florida man. It seems like he's got it all. Plus, he wears Daisy Dukes and wrestles alligators. I mean, seriously, yeah. does and it get any better than that? All right, now it's time for a more traditional Florida man story, because that last one was more heroic and should have probably been in one of our other more upbeat, positive <laughs> but this guy brings it and right back down to, to where it belongs. Oh, he purdy. Well, <laughs> admittedly, a little purdier with the wig. But anyway, let's continue. <clears throat> a man who authorities say may be behind a boat theft in the Florida heartland has been arrested despite his botched attempt to disguise himself as a woman, the Glades County Sheriff's Office said Now, Thursday. now, now. Okay. He was not trying to disguise himself as a woman. He's trans. So that means he is a woman if he says so. Does he's he just say as, so? He's I, way, I don't know. way prettier than the trans people in the government right I now. I know. Okay. Joshua Kolotka, 33, was arrested Wednesday afternoon during an investigation into a stolen boat at the old Calusa Lodge area in Lakeport. Wouldn't you just love to go to a lodge just because its name is the old Calusa Lodge? Yes, I would. I would. Mm -hmm. Deputies were canvassing the area in search of the suspect when they saw a person who appeared to be a blonde woman wearing oversized sunglasses leaving a home. That person turned out to be a white male and the alleged suspect of the theft, according to the sheriff's office. Kolotka was wearing a white cardigan on top of a light blue feather pattern dress, was subsequently arrested for two Okeechobee County warrants, along with the theft of a John Deere Gator and the stolen boat. <laughs> Several other possibly stolen items were also located, deputies said. The Glades County Sheriff's Office is currently working with Seminole Police Department to identify some of these items and figure out if they're connected to other theft cases in the area. Now, I think the giveaway was that he was wearing a white cardigan on top of a light blue dress in March. <laughs> Who does that? I think the giveaway was the square jaw and five o'clock shadow, but call me crazy. <laughs> But then again, that's the giveaway for most of them. Yeah, so, yeah. Eh, okay then. <laughs> With that being said, folks, it's time to wrap up. And now we can head into... Our favorite way to wrap up. Our favorite way to wrap up. Here on Counterculture Wise, we may rant, we may rave, but most of all, we go against the current culture because we believe to the core of our beings that humans are good and the world is an amazing and beautiful place. At the beginning of our show, we give you news of the weird and wonderful, but that is just the tip of the magnificent iceberg that is our world. We now present news of the wonderfuller. All right, Jim always tries to get me to cry on these, so let's see how good he did. I don't think this is a did. crier. This one's going to more make you happy, okay. make you smile. I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. When Nurse Sarah Longest first met Isabella, oh my goodness, Van Klopenberg on September 30th, 2001, the latter weighed two pounds, seven ounces, and was 15 inches long. <sighs> Lady V, I'm going to call her from now on, has grown up a bit since Longus was caring for the newborn at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital in Grand Rapids. Lady V was born by C-section when her mother, Stacy Grody, was 29 weeks and one day pregnant. The newborn stayed in the neonatal intensive care unit for 42 days before coming home weighing 4 pounds, 2 ounces. Lady V, now 22, 
is about to become a nurse herself. And she and Longa shared a special moment on Thursday at the Bullet Creek High School Auditorium. Longus pin Lady V in the traditional pinning ceremony that is unique to nursing students who are finishing their degrees. On April 28th in Grand Rapids, Lady V will graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing that she earned at Davenport University in Midland. It's like a full circle thing, and now here she is graduating from nursing school. For her part, Lady V was moved that Nurse Longus v. could be part... Huh? Nurse V. Nurse V. Ah, yeah, we can call her Nurse V now. <laughs> Nurse V was moved that Longus could be part of this big milestone in her life. I'm so thankful for Sarah and everything that she's done for me and my family and being a huge support system through that whole tough situation, Nurse V said. And I'm just glad that today I'm able to thank her and recognize her for all the work that she did. Well, she saved her life, kiddo. Mm -hmm. Nurse V and the 16 other members of the Davenport graduating class of nurses were honored in a 45-minute recognition ceremony in the auditorium, during which Nurse V was among those who presented an academic award for achieving a 3.7 grade point average or higher and a clinical excellence that award. That could not be easy. Mm, I know firsthand it's not. Near the end of the event, the students were called in alphabetical order to come to the center of the stage where they met the person they had chosen to pin them. When Nurse V's name was called, Longest carefully placed the Davenport pin on her white nursing uniform, and then the two shared a tender embrace. I think that's the picture there. Aww. Wow, that's amazing. Nurse V's mom, Stacy Grody, has kept in touch with Longest over the years through Facebook. And prior to Facebook, she would send me pictures and updates of Isabella when she was a baby, Longest said. My mom kind of reached out to Sarah because we thought it would be neat if she could pin me today, Isabella said. I love the name Isabella. It's a great name. Grody explained that not only did Longest take care of her daughter as a newborn, but three years later in 2004, her son Peyton, who was born... At 26 weeks, and Longest cared for him as well. Lady, you have a problem with your kids carrying a term. For Grody and her husband at the time, Mark uh, was able to rely on Longest again to be with their second child, and that meant everything. We were so comfortable and familiar with her. It alleviated any anxiety we had. Having a nurse we already trusted was huge. And that's why having Longest pin... Nurse V seemed so natural. When Bell mentioned the pinning ceremony, it immediately dawned on me that it should be Sarah, Grody said. What an amazing experience it would be to have Sarah come back and complete this circle. She didn't even hesitate when I asked her. Thursday meant the world to me to watch two of them on stage. It's such a blessing. I'm a very proud mother. Coincidentally, Longus was about the same age that Nurse V is now when she cared for her. She graduated from the Western Michigan University Nursing School nine months earlier, in December 2000. From what I can remember, I said I would take care of her for a couple of nights, Longus said, and then Stacy and her then-husband Mark asked me to, care, to take care of her every shift that I work. So that was called primary, primary care nursing. And I was happy to do so because they were such a lovely little family and so much fun. And she did great. And I love being able to just stay in touch with them. They've done study after study after study that um, babies recognize the people that are taking care of them. And having that full-time care makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. While still a licensed nurse, Longus has taken a step back from nursing and is helping with her family's business. I decided to hang up my stethoscope for a little bit. As for Nurse V, the nursing journey is just beginning. After graduation, she has a job waiting for her in Grand Rapids. Yay! We're kind of passing the torch in a way. I'm excited to become a nurse and to do my thing out there, too. Well, congratulations. Congratulations, and Nurse you know, Van there, Klompenberg. This, this has two beautiful messages. Number one, you know, when you have a young person like that willing to give their time and their passion to you know, a baby in need, let them, let them have it. I forgot to transition over the uh, picture, but here you go. Here's the picture. <laughs> and, um, I think, uh, 
let's say she would have been a candidate for abortion and to take a baby that tiny, two pounds, and for her to live to be this old and to contribute to society and probably to help save many lives. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have to say much more. (laughs) Nope. All that's been said, all that's needed to be said has been said, (laughs) except for thank you for joining us this week. (laughs) We have more fun stuff coming up next time. Yes, we do. We love you, (coughs) and we'll see you uh, next week. Bye-bye. Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our subscribe star, where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website. Just click on the link at the top that says, Be a Guest on Our Show! For more fun and cat pics, please visit our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. For complaints about our show, please fill out the ID10T form on our website, and we will give it the attention it deserves. Meanwhile, no matter how cruel the world may be around you, always remember the importance of kindness. Be kind to each other, be kind to animals, and be kind to yourself. See you you next next week! week.